104.9. Oh, it's all going well already, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> microphones fell apart. Carl shouting because he got headphones on. <laughs> His music's uh, turned uh, up too late. Canfield level. <laughs> God, he got pre out. Look at him giggling. <laughs> He's, look at him. Look at him laughing. That's so funny because I got a letter here uh, from uh, who was it from? Um, Mike Hill, who sent me a little picture of a little Japanese fella, fella from a film who said looks like me, and he does a little bit. Um, but he says, please can you make Carl laugh? I've never heard him utter as much as a snigger, and I'm worried he may have a genetic disorder. Well, I mean, he has got a genetic <laughs> disorder, yeah. obviously. But, um, he was giggling then. I hope, I hope, uh, oh, people it, heard you then. Look at his little face. It was a joy. Oh, just, I love the things that make him happy. But I love the fact, just before the, uh, the, the microphone came up, and just before the record finished, he had his headphones on, the music was too loud, and he was just shouting, Bauhaus is not working! <laughs> Bauhaus is not working! I have to play something else! I went and found Ziggy Stardust by Bauhaus, and why isn't it working? Look at him giggling, look, he's lost it! Is he, is he going away? Is he, are you on drugs, Carl? What have you done? He's, he's tickled, look at his little, he looks like one of those shaved monkeys. Look yeah. at his little, wit. oh my god, I've never seen a forehead glow. I know, it's extraordinary. Oh. And he's got that red shirt on as well, so the whole whole of him is just a big glowing... Carl! What are you trying? What are you putting in? Uh, I'm just gonna- I'm gonna see if I can get this to work. Go on then. Hang on. Brilliant let's, radio. Let's Dr. On. Fo- I hope Dr. Fox is listening, because I think he's eating his words right now, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> right, I, I think I've done it. Right. Well done. That's excellent. Right, what- what-, what Let's play Bauhaus now, and let's try and compose ourselves. This is Ziggy Stardust by Bauhaus. <laughs> well, it worked. That worked, didn't it? So you panic over. Calm, Carl now. Calm now. You are early soon, aren't you? Yeah. He's got. You got to go off early. Well, about about uh, about. How many holidays have you had? Because I only ever have time off when I'm working, like doing another job, like you know, filming or something. But you seem to have a lot of holidays, just like. And you were sick as well. You were just like because you had wet trousers, which is a little bit. Do do, do you not care about the job? I mean, I've got to ask because, you know, what I mean, if I was in charge, I'd worry about your motivation or because we. Yesterday we were trying to work out what you enjoyed doing, and we got to. Uh, Manchester United and moaning. And that is- that is the two we came I, up with. I don't with. know where you get the moaning thing You're from. You're always whinging. About what? Everything. Wh- when? When did I last have a moan? Uh, just before we came on air. Right, and why was that? <laughs> um, I don't know, I can't remember. Because well, we were in good mood, we were in a good mood, me and Rick. I'll tell you why. Go on. Because you brought a song in at ten to one. Yeah. With a load of effing and jeffing in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And saying, can you edit this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that's your job. <gasps> you could have brought it in yesterday. No, I couldn't. Why not? I hadn't thought of it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but why, but why, but why are you whinging? That's your job. And I didn't come in ten minutes before, it was a good twenty minutes before. It just took you ages because you were whinging and moaning mm. to even get started. I'm not, I'm not being dragged into this. You are always- I'm on my holiday now. Well, not yet. No, you're not on yet. You're still working. Well, this, this, that's what's funny. This isn't even work, right? And yet it should be. Compared to what I do in the week, this is a doddle. <laughs> well, it's because you're not putting any effort in, clearly. <laughs> Where are you going anyway? Where are you heading? Cornwall. Yeah? <laughs> What's happening down there? Uh, well there's a monkey world. <laughs> <laughs> You're excited about that. We don't, we don't see that. Probably go twice to that. Yeah. <laughs> whilst I'm down there. How long are you waiting for? <laughs> the whole week? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh... This is with your parents, isn't it? Yeah. Taking yeah. them out, taking them out. Your father, yeah. What do you think your father'll be up to? What's, what's he gonna be nicking on this holiday? Well, he's, tin. Uh, there's he's, a lot of tin in Cornwall. He's, Since uh, they've shut the mines. <laughs> He's, uh, he's just called Suzanne, said they've got there, said it's a nice little place. Mm-hmm. Uh... There'll be no there. towels when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> so no, what do you do? Bulbs. What are you gonna do? Just gonna t- chill out and sort of like go to the pub and stuff? Yeah, like I say, I mean, all I've got planned is probably the, uh, probably Tuesday and Thursday at Monkey World. Um... <laughs> what, what, what about Wednesday? What, what are you thinking of Wednesday? Just wand- wandering around? Just sort of think about, you know... Wh- King Arthur and that. Where, where, he was down there, wasn't he? I don't know, but I'll tell you, you going? something. What town? I don't, I don't know. I don't know where it is. Susan, I'll sort it out. Yeah, she sort it out. I, I joined the phone to her saying, well, pack them. Pack two pairs. Poor woman. She's packing your bags for you. Yeah. Right. But, uh, talk- you'd, be, you'd spend more time at home if Steve didn't come in at ten two with a rap record with, like, obscenities all over it. Yeah, well, we'll play that next week. Then. Well, you didn't even get the job done, that's the thing. <laughs> we can't even play it because you didn't get finishing time. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I tell you what, that method man, if he doesn't stop effing and jeffing, it's the end of his <laughs> career. In my opinion. <laughs> well, anyway. All this F that and uh, uh <laughs> yo, yo, yo Jeff, I'm a Jeff myself. Yeah. Or, or I'm, I'm hanging out with my Jeffs. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> Jeff and, you. And we know you can't put out the J word on, yeah. on XFM. Oh, Mother Jeffer. Well, <laughs> so we haven't got that, but what we have got- Go on. Monkey News. 
They've still got a monkey news, have we? That's sorted out, that's coming up. Yeah. Rockbusters. Yeah. Well, last chance. They're definitely your last chance this time. You, you actually improved a little bit last week, you did a couple of good ones. Yeah, yeah. Same again this week. And, uh, Cheeky Freak? The controversial yeah. Cheeky Freak of the Week. Where Carl, um, finds, uh, a, a human being with, um, some sort of, uh, congenital or, or uh, you know, um, imposed deformity <coughs> or, you know. So, uh, and we talk about that in a, in a wry way. Do you think that, do you think that's big and clever? No, but that's, that's just it. It's never about taking the mickey out of someone, right? It's about, it's to make you think- I'll tell you what isn't big and clever. How lucky you are. A dwarf that. with learning difficulties. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> we'll explain it to you. <laughs> that's the forthcoming single from British Sea Power. That's called Carrion. That's nice and retro. That's yeah. like end of the 70s Bowie. Mm. That's, that's great. Good. On XFM 104.9. That's just some of the records. That we've played so far. Do you know what I mean? You've had the darkness. You've had Bauhaus. It, it, it's like, can it get any better, Carl? Do you think? Like I say, we've got monkey news coming up. <laughs> <laughs> so. Guess what? I lost four hundred quid cash this week. Gambling? No, no, no. This that's tragic. Uh, that, this is why it, it gutted me. It wasn't um, even on your gambling addiction. No, I, I had a, uh, I had a photo shoot. I had a suit, right, and I'd, I'd claimed back some expenses, and I'd, I'd had it in my pocket. And then when I took the suit home, it must have fallen out in the street or the cab, <sighs> and I remembered it and, and I went to the- I went every pocket twice. And it was just the fact- I don't think about, oh god, that's terrible, that's a terrible blow. I think, oh god, if I had it back now, it would be free money. Yeah. If I suddenly found it now, I'd have four hundred pounds that was just free money. And yeah. I had a little nap to get over it and I was- <laughs> And you were fine. I was okay. But that's got- Four hundred pounds. Someone just found- what a gift that is. Oh. Just, I mean, untrue- Was it, was it is, in a money clip? Was it rolled no, up in a money clip? No, it was just literally four hundred quid in an envelope. Oh, and so that, treat. I know. Uh, see, I'd always hand it in. I genuinely would, unless I found it in a f in the middle of a forest or something. <laughs> if it was in the street. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? Because a bear dropped it. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, if I found it in a pub or a cab, I'd just hand yeah, it to anyone who was in. Or through. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But would, uh, I'd hand it in. Well, I, I am... But there's no way, if they found it in the street, there's no way they could do it. You know, it goes to the police station and it sits there for six months, but... Yeah, exactly. Well, it's not it's a waste of time. Pocket it. But, um, I, because when I was younger, I remember being outside a post office once when I was about ten or twelve, and finding a purse and thinking, oh, that's nice. <laughs> and I opened it up, and there was some money in there, and a pension book, and so it was obviously an old lady. I, had an, I found an address, I sent it to her, th and my mum said, you know, you've been so good there, you'll probably get a little reward. She'll probably send you a little reward. Nothing! I got maybe a thank you note, but no cash, no moolah, nothing. Really? And I was livid, because I'd been told that I was gonna get a reward, I thought I've been a good Samaritan, nothing. So, many moons later, when I was at university, I learnt from that, and I- and this is- this is the most bizarre thing. It this was explains like, a lot, doesn't it, Carl? This mm. is like the Mary Celeste. I went to uh, a cash point to put my- I thought, I can't get my card in here. And I realised there was already somebody's card in the machine, they put the code in, but, um, oh. but they-, they but the, then they just disappeared. They'd been kidnapped or something, so it was just there, waiting, sitting, said, what do you want to do? And it gave you a number of options. I thought, interesting. Steal? Or go to <laughs> yeah, heaven? Yeah, exactly. He went, oh dear, um. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I pressed, uh, balance. Just to check what their bank balance was. Unbelievable. It was a considerable sum of money. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was not typical student debt. It was like- I think they were a foreign student, there was a lot of cash in there. A lot of Did money. Did you feel a slight bulge in your trousers when you saw the amount of money? I couldn't believe my luck. <laughs> I thought to myself, <laughs> now then, I could just take that card out and hand it in, or I could teach them a small lesson, Right. and maybe give myself a reward, because last time I did that, I didn't yeah. get a reward. So if I give myself thirty pounds, mm. then I'll take the card out. Thirty? Give myself thirty yeah. You didn't really? Pounds. Well, I thought that's a good reward, and I- and I went in, I handed the card in, I took it Steve! Out, and that's... that's a little reward for me, and I'll tell you this, don't think it's evil, because I went in and I bought everyone a drink. Uh, well, brilliant. Yeah, I didn't yeah. tell them I got the money free. Well done. Excellent. So, so I, I- probably gangsters are quite generous. With well, the money they've stolen from other people. Yes, but someone's negligence, Rick, has lent- the, the, well, the thing is this, Steve, right? I, do, I, I believe it except that buying people a drink, Carl, what do you think? Well, <laughs> I kind of thought that when he said it, but then I thought, but they'll be buying one him back. So he's still- that, So in a way he's still a winner. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's a winner.
in that situation, including the student, because frankly, if there had been a, a less scrupulous person who found it, they'd have probably helped themselves to a considerable I, sum. I, I cannot believe he did that. There was thousands and but thousands of pounds in there. What if it was, uh, what if Beadler jumped out and slapped you with his little claw and said, we've been filming this merchant? Well, what, so what? How old were you then? I don't know, 19, 20. Would you do it again or was it just to get the world back for the old lady's purse? Um. Possibly do it again, yeah. You're, jo you're joking! Well, you've got to think of it this way. You've got to think of it as there was a lot of money in there and someone less scrupulous than me would have taken a fortune. They'd have cleaned them out. Whereas I just took a small reward, which I thought was more than enough for someone's negligence. <laughs> and I've returned the card. They've got the card back. Everything's fine. Think of I someone else. I could have gone on a spending spree. I could have been buying stuff, all sorts. Yeah, but it wasn't yours at all. Yes, but it it's- they probably would have given me a reward. And because, you know, sometimes people forget or, you know, they don't give you a reward, I thought I should he take it myself. He had to go myself. at your dad for nicking a loaf of bread out of a phone box. Yeah, but that's because it's for old people, geriatrics and stuff. How do you know how old was your people you were robbing from? It's a it was on a student hungry. campus. Mm. Mm. Wow. I think it was more, I thought it was excellent behaviour. God, that's good, incredible. That, that is, that's showing another side to him, isn't it? What would you have done, Carl, in that situation? And tell the truth. I, I might have helped myself a little bit. I there you are. I, there you no, are. What? This is helping no, yourself a bit. Like you say, just sort of, you know, send it in back and sort of say, you know. If you find a pound coin in the street and you can be bothered to bend over for it, then have it. But someone's cash point card or uh, personal belongings. I'd let them know though. Did you send it to them and say, I've, I've you know, I've service charge included? I've <laughs> sort of took that out already. <laughs> no, I gave, I handed it in to <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> Let them know. I'd, I'd say, you know, uh, you're lucky here, right? I just took, uh, I'd probably take 20, actually. Because okay. that's just like one note. Sorry, you, sure. sorry, right, okay. You are winding me up. No, no, I'm not. I mean, not for, for once. I mean, I, I know what Steve's like, he is tight, <coughs> right? Is, well. is, he, no, he is. <laughs> and you know that, don't you, Steve? Financially, I mean, I'm not, you mean? Well, no, I mean, just the way you are, you're very sure. sort of, you know, you, you're not- I'm You're not wasteful with your money. I'm careful. <laughs> no, I'm not wasteful. Absolutely right. No, no, but to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look come after on, the pennies, the pains will take care of themselves. Alright? <sighs> Simple to remember, good advice. Yeah, all right? but the thing is, right, um, I know that I take the mickey out of you for like, you know, the way you look and stuff. Sure. Right? Well, I'm right back at you. But the thing is, you can't help that. <laughs> Absolutely. But I'll tell you something that women don't like. Sure. And it's fellas who are tight with the money. Sure. I'm not- I'm not frugal with money with ladies. I'm frugal with money with you. <laughs> well, I've I- I've got no reason to splash money out on you. I've never seen you splash money out. Well, you've never been out with me. Have you ever- have, Steve, have you ever splashed out on a lady? Um, no, but I hope to one day. <laughs> the right lady. <laughs> Blair Rickman. <laughs> Blair, out of time on XFM. 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, talking to money, Steve, L look at this, right? It's in the paper. A wife has had her beauty insured for a hundred thousand pound in case she grows ugly and her husband walks out. Uh, Nicole Jones, 26, of Chipping Sodbury, Gloucestershire, says 200 pounds a year, that's right, pays 200 pounds a year for a policy. She arranged it um, as a present for her husband Richard. Her beauty will be judged by a panel of builders. <laughs> <laughs> so... Have they been selected beforehand, do you think? Do the I don't know. know who they are? I but assume I they're mean, complete I, strangers. So suppose, like, in 30 years' time, he looks at her and goes, oh, you've lost your looks. She goes, well, have I? Yeah. He goes, well, yeah. <laughs> well, have I? <laughs> Calling the panel. Some girls go, <laughs> Yeah. All right, get him out for that. Well, never mind that. It's your, yeah, she's lost it. Right, well, hundred grand. Well, they, hundred grand coming your way. They stand on some scaffolding. Yeah. She <laughs> walks by. Yeah. And if they will whistle, that is amazing. Uh, do you think they give her a quote first? Yeah. What if they say, actually, love, you've got nothing to lose. You're not. You're yeah. not. You're not an oil painting anyway. Yeah. We can't come round and judge your beauty for at least. Two I mean, weeks. that is just open to abuse, isn't yeah. it? A hundred thousand pounds. Because I remember, um, uh, in- in Japan, uh, they're mad on golf, right? And if you get a hole in one, you buy everyone, you throw a party. And it was costing them like thousands and thousands of pounds. So they were insuring themselves against getting a hole in one. And so miraculously, <laughs> everyone was going, I got a hole in one. Did he? Yep. Yeah. 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 Paying out insurance. I mean, they, they could be in that together, couldn't they? It's they're bizarre. not. I'm sure they're not. 
Well, they're, she, they're, yeah. they're probably more honest than you two that would take 20 quid out of a cash point. But, you know. No, 30. 30. <laughs> yeah, 30. Uh, the, it's, I like the wording, though. A wife. Yeah, a wife. The word wife. <laughs> the word wife. It's a. I don't know why it makes. I, I just find it's just an odd word. This is. Hello, this is my wife. Hello, uh, the wife. Yeah, the wife. My wife. It just seems a word that you have to say if you're 60. You can yeah, go, I know. Have you met the wife? And even then, ironically, unless someone. You don't know exactly. Are you married? Yeah, um, my wife is from. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. But it's but the wife. Going, people go, oh, better get back. I'm meeting the wife for dinner. <laughs> exactly. Especially when you know well, them. I, I, uh, yeah, I remember bumming into someone, a friend of mine, in, uh, somewhere at a party. To a couple that I knew, and I'd known both of them before they got married. In fact, I'd known her, I think, longer. And he and I said, da, 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 where's so and so? And, uh, and he went, oh, uh, the wife will be along in a minute. And it's just this notion that, but what, you use her name. <laughs> I know, I know, she I is. know, she is. I know <laughs> her name. <laughs> is that well, I used to call her by that. Why? It's like someone going, you know I'm married. Yeah, you know, exactly. you know I'm married. It's in like the, showing In the off. eyes of God, we are wed. <laughs> exactly. Yes, that makes me more of an of, adult than it's you. It's the ownership. Yeah, it's like going, you know I'm a real man. I've yeah. got a wife and here she is. She's uh, my wife. I find it, there's the words that I, f I find hard to say. <laughs> Um, in a shop, I could never ask for wet ones. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If I if I have to go and ask for wet ones, I won't bother. Or toilet duck. Another one I probably I never say Snickers. <laughs> Why? Don't know. I think as I grew up with Marathon. Yeah. See, I still this is so pathetic. I still get embarrassed buying uh, toilet paper. Really? We know if you go into like your tw twenty four hour shop just around the corner, not supermarket, big shop. But if you just go in, then you're just maybe buying some milk. Yeah. A chocolate bar. Because it's like they know what you're up to. No. They, no, they, but they know you're going to use it to, you know, when you're, you're going to the lavatory at some point. It's sort of, it's too intimate. But you exactly, they, they just go, I know what you're thinking, I'll be using this after masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> Thus saving all embarrassment. It <laughs> 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 goes with the porn mag I've just Albus Costello, Alison, from way back <laughs> on XFM 104.9, a retro cut. Indeed. Wow. Up to the modern day, the newest game show around, Rockbusters. Whee! Isn't there a jingle? It'd probably be something like, oh, Rockbusters. It would be very, <laughs> along yeah, those along lines. those lines. I've got to work it out, but I mean, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go without it for now and okay. then we'll be ready next week. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, the prizes, once again, sourced by Carl Pilkington. I think it's, um, been in the prize bag before, Carl, but I could see it back. The best air guitar <laughs> album in the world ever. Do they uh, keep sending it back? Is that just one? <laughs> is that, <laughs> it comes through the window, tied to a brick. Uh, actually, there's a lot of good stuff on there. There's, uh, the Kinks. Knopfler? Is there Knopfler? Knopfler, I believe, is on it's there. It's clapped in Rex. anywhere to be seen. Definitely clapped, so I would have thought, per a deep purple. We got Quo, Skinnerd, Mac, uh, Snake <laughs> is there, Straits, excellent. And, uh, yeah. yeah, there's all sorts on there, obviously. Yeah. Um, this is always an odd choice, but fair enough. This is the, uh, current album by the Yardbirds. <laughs> their first studio album in 35 years. So, uh, the new music stage at XFM, giving away that. Excellent. I suppose it's new music in, in, in some ways. Um, a Smash Hits compilation, we've got stuff on there. It's, uh, -huh, it's Curiosity Killed the Cat, it's all the, uh, the old favourites. Plus two DVDs, uh, Columbo. What which, Columbo? Uh, it's got a couple of classic Columbo episodes there. Suitable for framing. One of the best, um, TV programmes of all time. Why do I get- you can always tell immediately who the villains are. Suitable for framing, I'm assuming that's some kind of art dealer, yeah. maybe an artist. Candidate for crime, presumably some kind of, um, presidential political, or yeah. political candidate. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that, that'd be good, I'm sure, Columbo. I mean- Stab woman. That was my <laughs> yeah. favourite episode. St stab lady wife. I mean, to be fair, I'm not sure why- who would buy a Columbo DVD like you can't find it on TV? It, on now. <laughs> it's on now. <laughs> it's on now. I guarantee- because someone could maybe, uh, email in. Is there an episode of Columbo on now anywhere that got cable or digital? I think it will <laughs> Almost be. Almost certainly. But it is great. And the other uh, DVD here is Cruise of the Gods, which was the, um, the one-off TV kind of film, comedy film that was on at Christmas, featuring Rob Brydon and Steve Bryden, Coogan. Coogan. Uh, uh, it's good. Williams. So, uh, yeah, there's a few gifts there. Not, not, not bad, not bad right, at all. Right, now we yeah. get to the, uh, to the, the real deal. deal. Okay, okay. okay. This, this, is what, this is what everyone tunes in for. This is Monkey News, I think. Not, right, not, well, not the music. Um, go on. Well, here we go, then. Yeah. Three, uh, cryptic clues and well, that, and just work really it out. cryptic, but... Easy as that. Email well, in. It's, uh, yeah. Email in. All right. Well, what's the email address? Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Well, don't say that I know it or care. I think, yeah. So the first one, uh, he's got American coins all down his spine. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> He's got American coins all down his spine. What what band's that? What artist is it? What Email it, in. What does it begin with? What? N. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, I've got it already. Right, That's N. rubbish, too easy. Yeah, right, go on second next. one. Jeremy Beadle, uh, has got arthritis. Right, Jeremy Beadle has got arthritis. Yeah. That's the second clue. The, uh, initials there, S-L-F. Right, S-L-F. Jeremy Beadle's, uh, got a little bit of arthritis. <laughs> and, uh, the third one, uh, Foxy, Shipman, and a country western singer on a merry-go-round. S-D, right? So Foxy, Shipman, and some country western singer having a go on a merry-go-round. The initial S-D, right? <laughs> So email in, Ricky Dot <laughs> I'm intrigued with that one. I'm genuinely intrigued with that one. I'm I like the fact there's a certain whiff of controversy about it <laughs> because shipman is mentioned. <laughs> I know, yeah. Oh, a little dear. bit edgy there. So uh, that's that's the three. He's from your neck of the woods, isn't he? As well, shipman. Yeah, yeah. I think my mum's mum used to use him. <laughs> okay, let's play a record. Well. You want to play a record or play some adverts? Do you fancy some ads? Oh, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather <laughs> add adverts, well, yeah. Well, I've got some for you. <laughs> Placebo. This picture on XFM 104.9. Steve. Yes. I think, uh, Carl's gonna put most people to shame. We were talking about generosity earlier. Because Carl is a nice, generous bloke when it, when it really comes to it. He's paying for Father's Day. He's paying for the cottage that he's going away with his dad. Oh, are you really, Carl? Yeah. Right. Well, there's no way of us proving if that's true or not. What do you mean? <laughs> well, you could be lying. But why would I do that? Well, because you want to show off. I didn't do it on air, you mentioned it. <laughs> I don't want people to know how generous I am. <laughs> I just... <laughs> right. Just do it, just get on with it. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, like charity yeah. work in that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Do you, do you, do, but I, I'd have thought that you wouldn't have fallen for Father's Day. I'd have thought you'd have known it was like... Well, we don't. I mean, to be honest, there's a bit of a coincidence, because I paid yeah. for it anyway and it's happened to fall on... Right. On Father's Day, mm. right? Don't I mean, buy a card. Not don't, that don't, don't fall for it. It, it. I mean, obviously that and Mother's Day, and a plethora of other things were, I mean, literally invented mm. by card companies to make more money. I know. Uh, yeah. That's that's that's. Uh, I mean, my dad always says, "Don't don't get him a card or anything," because um, he hates it with, with all these things that I'd like, you know, rip off times really, just ripping people off. Yeah. Um, so it sounds, sounds a bit stingy, though. Well, no, no, I mean, he's right. Yeah. He's right, it's just, uh, because fellas aren't bothered about getting cards anyway, are they? But the the other thing that he noticed, um, you know, helping out the flower companies, the Princess Diana thing, when she- Oh, f Sorry. Yeah. No. Jesus. Cry- Carl. So when, yeah, when- Carl, when what, what, what do you mean? What no, do you mean? That's, that's what he said, he said, oh- I nearly swore then, because I was- uh, you surprised me- all the time. No, I'm, I'm but just- But that is incredible. Sorry, what- I don't understand what you're talking about. All the about. flowers that were sort of sold that day. Right. What, right. for people to leave as a commemoration or Yeah, they, they- they made a- made a mint, didn't they? Who did? Flower companies. Right, so what so are you saying? So saying, you're so saying- So he was just saying, you know, makes you wonder. <laughs> what, whether- About what? Whether it was in the floor or behind the hit. Oh. So it's a conspiracy? <laughs> It's a conspiracy by the flower companies. I would love to see you and your dad just sitting at home watching a bit of Channel 5 when apes go mental, right, with your- with your roast When's that dinner. on? When's that on? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's all like, well, yeah, well, you know, you know, kill Diana, don't you? Flower company's son. Right, 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 quite right, Dad, you're not wrong. What are you talking about? No, I'm not, I'm not you know, I'm just saying, it's- it's like you were saying about the cards, you know, on Father's <laughs> Day and that. It's, it's, it's just a bit- Too much a of a coincidence. Weird. Too much of a coincidence. I'd be interested to see sort of, you know, like the business graph. Sure. <laughs> yeah. On how the companies were doing, then suddenly- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <it's not laughs> yeah. But then- but then by the same token, uh, Elton John, you know, he had the biggest selling hit record, didn't he, off the back of that? Mm. I mean, so, is he incriminated as well? If you want, I mean... <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's a conspiracy there, theory you've not kind of analysed terribly closely. You've put it out there and if people maybe who are investigating want to kind of add that into their inquiries, then they can. Yeah. Sure. But, uh, no, that's, 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 that's all I'm saying. I'm just, you know... Cos it's always the same thing, innit? Like, I was out <laughs> shopping the other day, uh, you know, treating Suzanne like I do. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, I like I like spending money in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I was in W. H. Smith's. Yeah. Oh, classy. Yeah. The, what was, the, it? Uh, was it? Was it? Was it a big birthday? Was <laughs> it? <laughs> you, was, it a thir- was it a thirtieth? No, I was I was getting a. Uh, was it two biros for the price of one? <laughs> <laughs> I was getting I was getting a card for my dad for Father's Day anyway because yeah. I'm seeing yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, big Toblerone. Yeah. There was a. Who is it? Who, who is it? Who said Father's Day? They love a love a Toblerone. I've never understood Toblerone because the only time I see Toblerone is in airports. Yeah. Right. And mini bars. Mm. <laughs> that yeah. is what the the, the the small Toblerone is for the mini bar in a hotel, yeah. three star upwards. Mm. And the big Toblerone. Well, it's the big Toblerone is, is a gift, isn't it? It can uh, only be a gift. You wouldn't buy a big Toblerone you, for yourself. Uh, yeah, duty free gift. The Toblerone. It's next to um, you know uh, Chanel number no. five Toblerone <laughs> yeah. and a bear. <laughs> but it's, who specifically yeah. would you be buying that Toblerone for? I don't know. Someone who's clearly never had it before and would think it was interesting novelty. It, uh, yeah. Well, this I, gift's interesting. I'll tell you what, though, Toblerone is brilliant. I mean, if, if whoever makes that, if they want to send sort of, you know, some Toblerones, I, I mean, I, I will eat Toblerone. Well, yeah. Mm. I think very much the same uh, about, um, I think very much the same about fags. And of course- cigarettes. If you've got any boxes of cigarettes and, uh, <laughs> that you don't want, you know, <laughs> duty-free or whatever, I, send them. I, I'd just like to say that, uh, d- in no way do, do, do I endorse <laughs> Carl's dad's theory that flower companies were behind the death of Diana. No, well, well, I, Maybe I could say that on air as well, just to save any complaints. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, talking about fag packets and that, do you know how, like, now, they've got, uh, they've got, if you have these, They'll do you in, sort of thing. Yeah, on yeah. the front now, they've got these special stickers on them. Yeah. Saw a thing in a magazine the other day, <laughs> in Brazil, <laughs> it's got like pictures of ill people on them. Blimey. That they've is They've gone powerful. really, uh, hardcore over there. That's good, isn't it? But I mean, uh, to be fair, what more can they do? I mean, there are fag packets now that say these will kill you and people are still smoking them. I mean, yeah. I don't know what they. C- I don't think it, the, I don't think the message well, is getting you through. Could, you could ban them all together, I suppose. If if they, it, it seems weird to uh, sort of like you might as well sell guns and go careful. You can kill people yeah. with these. We'll ban them then. I'll just be <laughs> careful. Let's shoot your eye out with that. This is poison. This is poison. These are really, really mental poison drugs. You know those people with the. You ever see them in the street? Uh, they're selling fags, duty free, obviously. They're just selling them on the street. You know, have you ever seen these guys? Yeah, I, yeah. I walk them and they finish your road lock because yeah. I'm just near my place. And, uh, all these people, they're just, and they're sort of looking a bit shifty. And then they just, they think that you're maybe a smoker. They just, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, fags. And they'll open their jacket. And it literally will be like something from, you know, the 1940s. They won't they'll go have, to you, though, do they? No, smoking. It's dungeon growth. They know you must have never had a fag in your life. Um, but, you know, I might be buying them as a gift or something because I'm quite a generous guy. <laughs> 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 and, but it struck me, I was chatting with my friend about, you know, there seems to be, there are certain people who are very, uh, maybe they, they, they have trouble getting work or maybe they, um, you know, they're, they're immigrants who've not landed on their feet and they've, they, they've had trouble, you know, and so there's a couple of jobs they can do. It seems to be there's the fag selling, there's those people I know it's on Oxford Street who bend a piece of wire into the shape of your name. I mean, what kind of a gift is that, really? <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. It's like, oh, it's like they're literally giving them out. Or you can, de- well, you can have the, the bending the name, you can be selling those things that you throw what? at the wall and they, they sliver down. At Dover? Yeah. What, 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 what are you doing? Yeah, uh, you I'm, doing? A, I'm a, uh, trained carpenter. Right. You can you write really small on a piece of rice? I could try. Could you write those names on a piece of rice? I could try. It's quite tricky, but do what you think about, you can What do about it? the rest of your family? <laughs> Well, that one's only two, but he could be trained. He's got smaller fingers. Okay. Do you want to, um, to sell some knocked-off perfume? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Again, we'd like to apologise for any <laughs> inadvertent racism, suggestion that Lady Diana was killed by flower companies, or that Steve makes a habit of stealing from cash points. What about... XFM 104.9. A picture of Rick Waller on the front of the bargain bucket. <laughs> Red Hot Chili Peppers, universally speaking, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant, and of course, Carl Pilkington. Now, people come up to me and they say, Is Carl for real? And I go, What do you mean? He goes, Well, they want to say, Is he that stupid? And the answer is yes, right? Some people think that he's putting on. Some people think that he's a character that we've invented, yeah. like we've got an actor in, like he's a Gareth Keenan or a Tim or yeah. something, and I go- That no, we've scripted. He exactly, yeah. No, he's absolutely real, aren't you, Carl? I go, where did he come from? Well, just to tell the story, we came here and, well, I, I was much too important to run the desk myself this time round, so they just gave us a tea Steve, boy. Steve came in with you, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why do you remember that? Well, it, Steve knows, I don't want to keep going over it, but no, it's sure. just the way he looks, it's just <laughs> <great>. <laughs> yeah. Were you taken aback? 
A little bit. Yeah. Um, so, uh, right. And, uh, and it's just developed into my favourite thing. I also said that you get bored with, like, you know, battling tops or, you know, pets sometimes. I mean, I love, I love my cat, but he's not as, you know, Colin, my cat. Yeah. Colin, Colin. Actually, um, Kyle's away it, next week, is he available to run the day? <laughs> <laughs> no, well he's not as, he's actually not as intelligent as Kyle and that's the truth, he's not, you know. Well, he's marginally. Yeah, but, um, but, uh, and then in the week, he's like one of these little Tamagotchi toys, Carl, cos I have to phone him every day and keep his interest up. Yeah. Like I'd give him an interesting fact. And, um, I got a book out and I found out that I'd call Carl like that. And I thought this was a great fact, right? Um, a two-day-old gazelle can run faster than a racehorse. Right? I thought that was incredible. Sure. Okay. So I phoned him and I said, a two-day-old gazelle can run faster than a racehorse. He went, what's it do after that? I went, what? <laughs> he said, well, how fast can it run when it's adult? I went, well, even faster. He went, oh, I thought we could just do it then, but then it sort of lost it. I went, what are you talking about? I went, you know, that's incredible. A two-day-old gazelle can run He went, well, no, that's what they do. I went, what? He went, that's what they do, isn't it? I went, what do you mean? It's two days old. Right? He went, yeah, but a one-day-old fly can fly. I'm 30 and I can't fly. It's not <laughs> yeah. what I do. Right? And I went, right. He went, a jellyfish can hold its breath underwater for hours. I went, it doesn't hold its breath, does it? It hasn't got lungs. So he went, what? I know I had him. He went, what do you mean? I said, well, they don't breathe, do they? I went, what do they do? I went, well, they get oxygen directly from the water via osmosis straight into their cells. And it just went quiet. And I went, a two-day-old gazelle. And he went, yeah. Yeah. I, do you know what I mean? He's I, just thinking about the jellyfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, he was, he was looking up osmosis, <laughs> and then he was thinking about the jellyfish. But I just think, I mean, if Bam is anything to go by, this little gazelle spends a whole day trying to stand, and the next day it enters the derby, and you don't <laughs> think that's amazing. you don't think that's incredible. Yeah. See, so, yeah, you know the sort of things I find incredible. Go on. Um, mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> Shiny ah, objects. Kettles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Well, uh. listen, listen. Remember the time when I told you about the the uh, baby that had a baby? The well, baby that had a baby. The baby that had a baby. Yeah, it's happened again. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Well, it, it didn't was happen in, the first time. It was in the papers, I think, on uh, on Monday in all the uh, tabloids. So it's a twin where w one is, has has grown and the other one is still at a fetal level. No, it wasn't. It? Though it had grown. He was saying to his mum. Uh, Who was saying to his mum? The little kid. He was seven years old. And he kept he? saying, yeah. yeah he was and he was pregnant? Yeah. I know. <laughs> what do you mean? And, uh, he was saying to his mum, oh, God, I don't feel well. And, like, his belly was all swollen, and they thought he'd just been eating cake or whatever. And, uh, he was saying, I can feel something moving about. And they were like, stop messing about. There's nothing wrong with you. Uh, eventually, I think he was in gym at school. In gym? What, gym <laughs> was pregnant with him? <laughs> oh, he was no, it was, was like at, a Russian he, doll. He was at, he was at school, right? Just about to do, uh, sit ups or whatever they do at school, right? Yeah. And, uh, Flew out across the room. teacher goes, you're a bit fat. You look a bit pregnant. And, uh, so best to the doctors, took him, said, uh, you're seven years pregnant or something like that. What you yeah. <laughs> what, 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 or something like that? No, you're no, no, seven no. years pregnant. <laughs> or something like that. You sit in the doctor. <laughs> Carl, why don't you think well, about what you say before you say it? See, see the reaction I get. Now the gazelle, I didn't get excited like that. <laughs> <laughs> seven years pregnant. Send it in. If someone's online at the moment, just having a look around, it'll be on, it'll be, it happened on Monday or Tuesday. Cause I told you at the pub quiz, didn't I, Steve? I said but to I don't, you, you, another you... baby's had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> and you were like, yeah, uh, whatever. Well, I just thought you were talking nonsense as ever. Well, we'll find out. You're well, seven yeah. years pregnant. Yeah. You're a fool. Play a record. Well, we've still got stuff coming up. Monkey news? Rockbusters answers. We'll have to yeah. get that out of the way soon, cause we've got well, to get out of Have we got a cheeky freak of the week? Yep. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> America by Simon and Garfunkel on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais and I understand I'm about to read my words, Steve. Well, once again, there's always someone and, uh, it looks like it's Mike Lamb who it has come to Carl's La La rescue. Lambo's let me down then. Doctors have removed a four pound baby boy from the stomach of his seven year old twin brother. Yeah. Alan well, Jan so, so, yeah, twin brother, was yeah. born with the freak fetus growing inside him. For seven years it lived like a parasite until a school doctor became alarmed about Alan and Jan's bulging tummy and took him to hospital. Surgeons who gave him a scan operated immediately, unaware that the baby was attached to the boy's blood vessels and still alive. They saved Alam Jam from certain death but knew the eight inch fetus was doomed. So there we are. Um, Boy Pregnant with His Own Twin Brother by Barbara Davis. That was in the mirror, apparently. 
So, uh, I've read on and all the facts are right. They, they took him to school, the parents, uh, didn't realise. And that isn't even, uh, this week's Freak of the Week. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's still that to come. Free. You've got that, you can have that. <laughs> that's the free freak of the week. <laughs> free freak that, of the that's, week. That's, you know, that's giveaway, that's like 13.5% extra. Yeah. You know what I mean? That you might get with hairspray or something. So that, I mean, if that's, if that's just the throwaway freak of the week, there are two freaks of the weeks there, if that's, if those two freaks, I can't wait to see what the actual freak of the week is that people are paying for. Mm. It's incredible, Carl. I'll tell you what, something else you can have for free. Go on. Uh, another sort of freaky thing, right, I was watching this, uh, this program in the week. Right? What? Uh, I don't know what it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it is, it, it was about, uh, I just saw, <laughs> saw this little fella on it, right? What do you and, mean little uh, fella? He, he was doing this history thing. Oh. Right? Yeah, I know what you mean. I, no. So, is this that he's found out that a Viking was a bit like him? Yeah, that's it, yeah. D he was boneless or something, or he's- uh, Well that's, that's the weird thing. What do you think of that, Steve? He's what? He's boneless? No, he was called Harry the Boneless or something. Yeah, but you know what you're gonna get there, don't you? <laughs> that's what I mean, I always have a- have a name, <laughs> Elephant Man, you know. <laughs> Harry the- Harry the Boneless. <laughs> Where is he? I, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm meeting- I'm meeting someone, uh, waiter, um, what's his name? He's called Harry the Boneless. He's over there flapping around. Yeah. 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 He's remorse. over there in the bucket, having noodles. <laughs> that's what I mean. But- do you reckon you could do that? Do you reckon you could <coughs> have your bones taken out? <laughs> I love talking to him! He's brilliant! He's like talking no, to asking, a five-year-old. I, I was asking Suzanne when she was watching it and she was like, ask me later. Yeah, brilliant. She was- she wanted to know about, you What know, did you- you said, you were- you were watching this programme about history, right, about Vikings. Like that, you right. turned to your girlfriend and said, do you reckon you could have your bones taken out? Yeah, I do, love that. I mean, think? that's- that, that is why you are my favourite thing. What do you thing? mean you think you can have your bones taken out? <laughs> Firstly, why would you have your bones taken out? If well, you've only got a small flat or something, <laughs> and there isn't much room. Yeah. Right? And what I mean is, would all your organs still do the stuff? No. no. They wouldn't. You'd just be mush. Listen, I'll tell- I'll teach you something now, right? The skeleton, right? Spam. Yeah? Support, movement, anchorage- no, support- Protection, anchorage, movement, spam. That's what, that's what the bones do. Yeah? You couldn't stand up. You wouldn't be protected because they protect his rib cage, skull, of course. Anchorage, everything holds onto it. Every muscle is tethered to pull against something, like a crane, a pulley system, so you wouldn't be able to move at all. Mm. Uh, do you know what I mean? So you'd just, you'd, you'd be in a bucket. There'd be nothing, you, well, you'd die immediately, obviously. No, you can't have your bones taken out, Carl. I mean, I mean, why do you need to ask that question? Sorry, uh, but Boneless Bob, or whatever his name was. Harry. Harry. Harry the Boneless. <laughs> he, he presumably <laughs> didn't have any bones, I mean, that's why he had that name, obviously. No, he did. No, he well, had, he's got the name. Yeah, exactly. No, he was just... <laughs> he was... <laughs> um, I've had an email here from Graham, old Ken Rowe, he just says, I had a dream about Carl last night. I had a dream about Carl last night, can I sue? <laughs> I have no idea what he looks like, apart from the boldness, and yet he turns up in the middle of my dream. I don't need this, it's harassment. <laughs> yeah. Um, but people are having dreams about you now, Carl. Uh, you actually- it's like you're one of the- something that cre was created by the Brothers Grimm. I- I've got- I- I had a dream. You know when you used to, people used to have anxiety dreams, they had like an exam or something, like, you suddenly go to school and you realised, oh my god, you didn't have, um, uh, your trousers on, or, uh, I had an anxiety dream, I assume, we, we started off an anxiety dream about the office, about filming the office, and we had to- we had to film in HMV, but someone hadn't cleared it, and so we- we had to find an R price, and I went, oh, okay, that'll do. And as I was walking there, right, um, I didn't have any shoes on. Which is like an anxiety dream, but I looked down and I went, so what? Yeah. So I'm so lazy now, I think, it, even an it, anxiety dreams don't kick in to me. I'm not sure that's true, Th I think that's just a memory. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be at all surprised if you, uh... <laughs> Turned out with the film in the office Yeah, going, with no shoes. We don't need shoes. When we were originally doing the pilot for the very first series, um... Obviously Ricky's the main character, he's in it all the time, it's obviously important, he's had a big chance to get something made for TV, you know, this could launch our careers. And, um... I turn up on the Monday, he's twisted his ankle. He has to be wheeled around in a wheelchair, cos he went out jogging, stepped on a tin can in the street, and fell over. Who left that there? Like a forty-year-old man with brittle bone disease, he just <laughs> twisted his ankle and he was out of action. It was pathetic. Yeah, that was the pilot. Absolutely pathetic. But I still turned up, Carl. That's the sort of trooper I am. Well, yeah, but you moaned the whole week. Wait, wait, wait. Well, I didn't like having to go around in a wheelchair, did I? Yeah. It's not pleasant, you know, but 
in a, in a weird way, it taught me all the problems. <laughs> Do you have anxiety dreams, Carl? Do you ever lie awake worrying about stuff? Uh, cos I have a lot going on in my head. Mm. Yeah. I very- yeah. I, I, I don't have- that. <laughs> What do you do? Rent it out to people? <laughs> <laughs> Is it two monkeys swinging in a tie at the moment? Yeah. I just don't have that many dreams. No. Uh, <laughs> I love- I love that! I love the fact you don't have that many dreams! Well, you haven't had a decent night's sleep since you were fourteen, according to you. Twelve. Really? Yeah, so- I, I, know, I know what you meant- I know what you mean, though, now, when sometimes you're so tired, cos I'd forgotten that. You're so tired and you think, well, I'm so- I'm so glad I don't have to go out tonight. I'm gonna go and just lay on the couch and then go to bed. Yeah. Mm. Have but you had one sleep? Have you? No. Anxiety dreams, I do have them periodically, yeah. It used to be a lot of, you know, things like running to get to, get to school in time, but, you know, suddenly your feet are running but in I, I treacle and you can hear the school bell and you I can't haven't had them for years. Way. I just haven't had an anxiety dream for years and years and years. As, yeah, don't know. I just don't care. <laughs> no, well, no, you just genuinely don't care about anything. This is the problem. <laughs> you, you've just got to a point now where nothing bothers you, really. It's <laughs> like you're just too lazy and disinterested in anything. This show, your career, my career, Carl. <laughs> No, I never, I never give up on Carl. So, um, Carl, so this little Harry the Boneless, what was your point? Was that, was that really your point? You wondered if you could live without bones? Yeah, I saw, saw the little fella on, on this programme and the he- The presenter? He, yeah, and he was, he was a small fella and he was talking about Harry the Boneless. And I thought, you know, that's, that's interesting mm. little bit of science stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's that's about it on him, really. <laughs> All right. Well, that's just another bonus cheeky freak of the week. Isn't and it's it? not. That's not even the freak of the week either. No, 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 no. That's still to come. So you've had a pregnant. You've had a pregnant Siamese twin. I know, it's been mad, mad. You've in the had freak a bonus week. fella and a, a, a another fella talking about him. They're they're not even involved in freak of the week. No. This is getting mad. Play a record. Let's play a record. Let's have cheeky freak of the week afterwards, shall we? Yeah. Current oh. single from Nick Cave. <laughs> Can we do monkey news first? Oh, I'd rather have a cheeky freak of the week. Mm. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, He Wants You. Brilliant. Him. Yeah. So, Carl, off you go. Well, we, we, we're we not gonna do, uh, Freak of the Week here. Okay. Right? Because we've, we've done quite a bit of that in the last twenty minutes, right? We've so we'll on that. Freaks, you think? Yeah. Sure. We'll just shift it a little bit. Okay. Uh, and I don't, like I keep saying, don't want people to be thinking we're sort of taking the mick out of anyone. <laughs> no. Right? Because... We're not about that. I feel that, like I can do a little bit of it because I work with with you, Steve. Yeah, right? <laughs> sure. It, it gives yeah. me that right. It's like a care worker. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like that thing of you can't be homophobic because I've got a couple of gay mates and sure, stuff. Sure, sure. It, I think, it sort of gives me that edge. Yeah. Right. So, so you're not freakophobic because you work with Steve. No, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, they, 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 by, by, by that token, I should be able to sort of slag off, you know, the mentally ill. What do you mean? At least mentally handicapped. Now, there's a term you don't hear very often. In, in 2003, <laughs> <laughs> the, the mentally handicapped. <laughs> the mentally handicapped. Isn't that what oh, it was? I don't know where to start. But I, I I'd mean, like to apologise for the Lady Diana stuff. Uh, <laughs> the term <laughs> mentally handicapped. Um, and any inadvertent racism that we may have done with What's the actual term then? <laughs> <laughs> Is it retarded? <laughs> right. Right, come on now. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news. Earlier than usual. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to save this link now. Monkey news. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff, <laughs> right, on monkeys. Um, and most of it has been- It's uh, bollocks! No, has been, has been like, happy stories. Oh, <laughs> is this a sad- it's not a- it's just gonna be like our tune, our monkey tune. That's Simon Bates, and uh, welcome to our monkey tune. No, but do, do you know what I mean? We've we've done we've done stuff about a monkey that robbed a bank. Yeah. Why uh, is that happy? He had a great life after that. Right. What in Marbella? Yeah. All right. We did uh, the one who who uh, saved someone's handbag in a railway station. <laughs> We've had, we've had a lovely marriage, couple of marriages, couple of marriages, <laughs> couple of monkey marriages. Yeah, um, yeah. There was the one who got a job in a railway station. Yeah, the hairdresser. The one who set up a business in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even I remember, don't that, remember one. that one. Either. But I mean, uh, I'm willing to believe that that happened. Go on then, Carl. Um, but anyway, yeah. So today's isn't isn't that uh, isn't that happy really? It's about uh, some monkey. I think it was a chimp. Um, <laughs> Who's an ape? Go on. It tried to 
it, it, I mean, the story sets off a, a, a sort of a, a weird thing. Yeah. It's something about he, he went to Russia to do some business. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, Carl? I don't, it it I mean, jumped past that bit, though. It didn't start there. What? He, do you know what I mean? It, it, it didn't tell you what he was doing. It just said, "There's this monkey went to Russia um, <laughs> to do some business, I know. do some stuff, I don't know bit of monkey business." And um, <laughs> anyway, didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> they were furious. We wanted a surgeon. You send us a monkey. Um. Anyway, ended up being homeless. Oh, no, it's so always taking a turn for the worst. What couldn't even get into a you know like a tree hostel or anything like that. That's 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 the problem. And, oh uh, God. Ended up. Uh, yeah, ended up homeless. Got in with some uh, some tramps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to start. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, yeah, so he's knocking about with some tramps and stuff, um, you know, sharing drink and what have you around a little fire. Um, <coughs> they broke into some home, not sort of squatted. Right, so not homeless anymore? Um, problem was, yeah, he had a, a you know, you know, roof over his, uh, little area head. Yeah. And he goes, uh, oh, this is good, this is, you know, we're having a good time, this is sorting me out. Yeah. He had, had his He mate. said that in Russian, though. <laughs> what, 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 what was he eating? I don't know. Don't know, it didn't say. But they're in this house. Well, like, well, he could only be eating sort of like, you know, fruit, nuts, vegetables. That, I mean, they, they fat classically just sort of don't eat, you know, pork pies and But they've got McDonald's coffee. in Moscow now, so. Sure. He probably turned sure. down on that. Yeah. 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 Anyway, there was a bust. Um, <sighs> what? This was there, was a, there was a bust in the flat that they were squatting in. All the other tramps sort of knew what was going on, legged it, left uh, little chimps out there, got arrested. And they thought it was a real fella, at first. <coughs> they were like, get him, you know, he's obviously just a scruffy bloke who hasn't had a shave and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hasn't shaved his back for a <laughs> yeah. while. Or his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His head. Got, yeah. Got him down the station, and uh, the boss was like, what's going on here? We've got a monkey here. He was like, what? So you arrested the monkey. Well, so, the, uh, arresting officers hadn't noticed all the way to the station that he kept slipping out of the handcuffs mm. and was going, <coughs> For the entire journey. They didn't notice till they got there. What, did they put a hood over his head, maybe, and just, like, bat, you know? I, I don't know. I'll, I'll give you the, uh, give you the story if you want. Uh, there's the headline. What is it? What's the headline, Steve? I don't want to see it, but... The headline, this is once again from supposedly reputable news organisation Ananova, homeless monkey arrested in Russia. Uh. <laughs> did, sorry, did you read on, or did you see the headline and make up that whole story? It's, most, most of it is there. What, what isn't there? What, what bit isn't there, then? Uh, no, I think, I think, you know, uh, Steve can have a look over it, check it out and stuff. Point but out it, the embellishment was... for me, Steve, will you? W well, what it doesn't say is, uh, <laughs> that the police didn't realise it was a monkey. That's what I was guessing. That's what I was guessing. Really. That they got it back and they said, what are you doing, we've got a monkey here, and they go, yeah? Yeah. Oh, God. There's some more, uh, monkey problems in the week. Have you seen the Alfreds advert with monkeys in? No. There's a new advert out for Alfreds, selling bikes and stuff. Yeah. Got some monkeys in it. It's yeah. caused an uproar. Why? People are saying it's, uh, you know, dressing them up in tracksuits and that is, uh... Taking the mickey out of Manchester. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not nice for the animals and that. So there's been loads of complaints about it. they get a free it. bike or something, do they, I imagine? I think they kept the tracksuits. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Shit, that's, I record that's, that's after thing, this though. cheeky freak of the week. No, I'm just just saying we're not doing this to sort of again take the Mickey out of the animals and stuff. These are true stories and that. But yeah, coming next, freak of the week. <laughs> Kings of Leon, Red Morning Light on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, uh, Steve Merchant, and little Carl Pilkington. It's getting exciting because it's uh, this special time of the week where he gets <laughs> to talk about. A cheeky freak of the week. Well, just get Rockbusters out of the way, right? Because I've got to, I've got to put these prizes in the post bag now because I'm shooting off. Yeah, because you've got to go early. So I don't know how you do your job. You, you went to Manchester. You went to uh, Madeira. You had a day off because your trousers were wet and you had a cold. And now you're shooting down a Cornwall. You're leaving early. 
How do you get your work done? And you've got one job. Me and Steve have got loads of things to do. Because I'm having fast let me work. Like I said, the prize is ready and packed up. Here. <laughs> no one's being affected by me shooting off early. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So, Rockbuster's answer's got to get them out of the way a bit earlier. Right? So, here they are. First one. Uh, he's got American coins all the way down his spine. Yeah. Why would that be? Right? <laughs> Initial was N. Nickelback. Nickelback. I got all these. One. I got all these this week. Right. Uh, second one. Jeremy Beadle has got arthritis. What, what's going on there? Stiff little fingers. SLF. Stiff little fingers. Yeah. And the third one. Foxy Shipman. And uh, no. And a country and western singer. You said. <laughs> now, what's the initial? S D. Yeah. So Spin Doctors. Yeah. I got that. But and then I said to you, why is it a country and western singer? And you said Doctor Hook. Why is it Dr. Hook? Why does that give the, anyone the clue, Dr. Hook? A country and western singer? It's just what, what, what was in my mind when I <laughs> what, <laughs> Well, there we well, are. There you go. So, it was changed this to Rockbusters or What Am I Thinking? You could have had Dre. What's in my mind? You could have had And The Medics. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Yeah. Just think it through. Who's the winner? The winner... Very lucky, Sandra Cassidy of Leon C. She gets all those great prizes. You know, we've actually had people emailing in saying, this is the worst Rockbusters ever, because it was too easy, it was boring. Oh. Well, uh, 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 this is just, uh, don't shoot the messenger. Oh, dear. Other people saying, um, what? it really has run its course. Some people genuinely agree oh, with Oh, Carl, this must hurt, mate. Stinging attacks on you. Um, some people just slagging you off generally, saying oh, you, win, you whinge all the time. Looks like Steve like. was right when he, um, sort of like, poo-poos your ideas. So. When he, uh. When he wheezes on your bonfire. Other, someone else, I swear to God, someone else emailed in and said, don't bother sending me the prizes, take them to a charity shop, or pawn them, give me the money, I'd rather have it. So I don't know what to say, Carl, I just wonder if it really has run its course now. Alright, well, well we'll see what you come up with next week, no. then. Let's, <laughs> see, let's see what you do, let's see what you come in with. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. About five to one. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you'll be popping in with a other hip hop track yeah. full of uh, yeah. full of effing and Jeff. Well, no, 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 I won't, I won't bring it into you. I'll do it myself at home because obviously that makes oh, it easier. Oh dear, you can't cope. Oh dear. Are you actually going to be here next week, or are you still going to be in Cornwall? No, you see, there again. I'll be back. I'll be back in time. Oh. And in the in the week when I go to you know Cornwall, to see the Monkey World. Yeah, you're two days past work. the Monkey World. That still work. Yeah. <laughs> What? what? You're going to interview some of the monkeys? What? I love stories. that. I love that. You, you were going, could a monkey live without bones? And so I'm going, Carl, shut the f- please, just look at the monkeys and eat your ice cream. And that's work, is it? Right. Right, so, are we having uh, Cheeky Freak of the Week? Do you want to do it? What yeah. time have you got to shoot off? Could do with shooting off sort of soonish. Okay. To be honest. <laughs> this is not radio. <laughs> have you ever heard that on a radio <laughs> show? Know, Chris Tarrant going, I can't shoot off a radio. <laughs> I, I really, I, I didn't, it's I couldn't get a later train. <laughs> I know! Get a, why didn't you get a later train? There isn't, there isn't, there isn't a later train. So I couldn't get to Cornwall tonight if I had to. If I had to finish this show, I couldn't possibly get to Cornwall. Rubbish. Um, of course there's a later train. Oh, I've, I've, I've booked it now, anyway. Typical. Right, well that's yeah. the point, isn't it? Yeah. You're not thought right, Whatever, through. whatever. I don't think the show's lost anything. I think we've still had the, you know, <laughs> Freak of the Week's coming up now. <laughs> Oh, cheeky freak of the week. Right, well, uh, we've had some, uh, interesting things we've been looking at. Uh, this week, it's, uh, it's about the strangest couple that ever got married. <laughs> 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 and, I, and we've had two sets of chimps, yeah. so it's stranger than that. Oh, oh. it's not Dale Winton and Nell McAndrew, <laughs> It's it? not your parents, is it? <laughs> Well, we're going back again to about, I think this is about 19, uh... <laughs> Something rather than 1940. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, str important. strangest couple, a fella, right? He had skin of a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> he had the skin of a lizard, okay. <laughs> and the woman which, who he which married... Which he used as a condom. The yeah. woman who he married. Yeah. Uh, airiest woman ever. <laughs> right. Um, and that was their act. They used to, uh, tour the world. And they'd say, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, couple who've met, they're having a great life. <laughs> uh, let's get them out on stage, here they are. <laughs> and they'd, uh, they'd What do you mean out. he had a skin of a lizard, first of all? That's what, that's what it said, he, he had some sort of, uh, some illness. 
So he was called Lizard Man, and you liked that because it was good description. Oh, so that's good. I'm here. No, no. Hello, uh, did, did we booked a table for two? Who are you meeting? I'm meeting Lizard Man. Oh, he's over there. Yeah, you know who he is, right? Yeah, I'm Look meeting out. the hairiest woman in the world. She's over there. Yeah, yeah. So what did they do for their act? Um, now, bear in mind that we had some Siamese twins last week, and their act was having a bath. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, I what hope it's an improvement so, on that. Liz, what did Lizard Man? He came out and ate some flies, did he? I don't- I don't really know. I think- I just think they stood there on that. Yeah, what do you- when you read this, and you- it goes, the most interesting fact ever, uh, Lizard Man, and you go, that's enough, that's yeah, enough, yeah, well, I can extrapolate from yeah, that. but straight away I start thinking, I'm thinking, right, I wonder if they got the wedding photos. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and then, like you said, that they had a kid. Oh, what would that be like? Exactly, exactly. Exactly. It'd what be what like an thinking. ostrich, wouldn't it? It that's, would sort of like. That's what I was thinking. What did you think it would come out like, the baby? I didn't think what that looked like. I just was thinking, oh, parents' evening. <laughs> Do you, you, know what I mean? you wouldn't want them coming up to the school, would you? <laughs> so well, that's so little problem. Johnny, who starts off relatively normal, he's quite good at, you know, he's good at nature, yeah. isn't he? And uh, and uh, his mum and dad come into the room and they'd be looking round, wouldn't they? Well, it's always like that thing. At school, when like mm. you find out your your mates, mum and dad are really old. <laughs> right, have you sure. ever seen that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when you go, have you you know, your grand and granddad bought you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah mum and dad. Yeah. And you go, oh. <laughs> it is weird. <laughs> What's that we're talking about? He calls him mum. What was that? I was like, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and no, like, that's always strange. <laughs> just, if you had a, if you had you know if you had Godzilla and King Kong as your parents yeah. and and it and was they're like always saying, fighting they're always fighting and and you know like you say if you're in a school play or something you you wouldn't tell him would you you wouldn't no. want him coming out with a video he camera he didn't tell his parents oh. he was in the when we were, well exactly you, you did little donkey and you didn't tell your dad did you and he yeah. came along and videoed it yeah was kept that quiet kept it quiet don't want him to know anything but you didn't what was it it was meant to be playing you had a little drum didn't you yeah I was doing uh, I had a little drum I think it was meant to be playing We Three Kings. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> he started doing Little Donkey and I thought, I can add a touch to this. Sure, you <laughs> improvised. Started playing along. It was like the first it. remix, yeah. wasn't it? It went, went down well. But yeah, that's, that's all I was thinking with, uh, the Freak of the Week this week. That's, that's what I'm saying about Freak of the Week, it's to get people thinking, right? <laughs> thinking how lucky they are. That, you know, they, they don't have to... Comb their face. <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? What do you mean, Freak of the Week is to let people know how lucky they are? Just- What about the little freak you're talking about? What are they thinking? They're going, oh, he's talking about me. I'm a little airy lizard man. On a stick. Pop in. Give us a call. <laughs> I thought, uh, you know, that's- that's what I'd like to do on a TV programme. That's what I want to do. I want to go and, like, meet these people and say, right, let's just go shopping, let's- you know, we'll film what your normal day's like. Yeah. Let's pop out. <laughs> Nip into Sainsbury's or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, buy a comb. Park, or a, park right up close to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is, is you just want to get a little message out there, which is that there's always someone worse off than you. Well, there's proof of that in this room. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh! Carl, when's your train? In a minute, I'm gonna get going now. I'll see you later. Thanks, Carl. Right. Brilliant. What are you playing? You can play a song? Kirsty McCall. Yeah. I'll see you later. Cheers. Kirsty McCall, New England. Carl Pilkington has left the building. He's rushed away. He's on his way down to Cornwall. And he- and we're left by ourselves. Indeed. In uh, the room. See, if we can do this- If we can press all the buttons and not make any mistakes, strictly speaking, there's no need for Carl. I don't mind if we make mistakes. Well, no, exactly. We never were in the, in the old days, No, sure, sure. Um, I think Carl is gonna love Cornwall. Because mm. I think, one, the mayor is probably an animal. <laughs> yes. And I imagine the townsfolk think like Carl. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I imagine he'll probably he'll stay there. He'll, he'll be made king. Have you ever seen Return of the Jedi? <laughs> In yeah. Return of the Jedi, the Ewoks, the little <laughs> furry creatures, they see C-3PO, <laughs> and because he can talk and, he's, and he can speak that language, they actually elevate him oh, he's to godlike back. status. What are you doing here? Hooray! He's back. I mean, what are you doing? You could have stayed till the end. What are you right, doing? What are you doing? Right. Right, well there he is, he's on his way. 
Yeah, if, you, if you're listening online in Cornwall, I mean, I, I can't imagine that's ever going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, on, like, on a clothesline with a, with a bean tin <laughs> exactly. at one end and yeah. a, a big bean tin in London, or if I'm, f- I'm cool in London. Yeah, or if the foil uh, <laughs> helmet you wear to fend off laser rays from alien terror space are somehow picking up the show, <laughs> then uh, Carl's on his way, look forward to him, he's the bold one. Because he's got a sort of like, you know, the uh, uh, obligatory sort of red face that mm. go well down there now, because mm-hmm, I think mm-hmm. he's been out in the sun or he was, uh you know, uh, pre-boiled when he came in. But he's, he's rushing down to Cornwall now, going from Paddington Station. So, yeah. uh, you know- If, if you want- if you hang in- if you're in the Paddington Station area, you want to pop down there and sort of wave him off, then do. Yeah. Don't be afraid. That's not a- that's not a dirty sexual act. <laughs> wave him off. Yeah, I'd love to <laughs> <laughs> wave him off. And, um, call in the week as well, um, carl.pilgerton.xfm.co.uk. Mm-hmm. Send him anything. Just clog up his email. Yeah. I mean, cos he gets stressed at work, so if you can send him three or four emails each yeah. over the next week so he's got to read them all. But disguise them, don't make him look rubbish so he's, at least he's got to sort of open them and look at them or, you know, some of them might be correspondence so he will, it's, um, you know, just phone his, uh, line as well, just ask for XFM, ask, uh, Carl and leave long messages yeah. on his voicemail. Yeah. So, if, if you can, uh, just, just for us, just for me and Steve, remember it is mine and Steve's show, Carl is merely like, you know, the icing on the cake. Yeah. If Carl can come back maybe next Friday or Saturday or, 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 or Monday, whenever he comes back, to about 250 emails and 200 voicemail messages. If you, if you put down, when it says, uh, what's the name of the message, the title of the message, if you put monkey news or monkey information, they'll have to open it then because he'll be intrigued, even if yeah. it's not about monkeys. Yeah. Do that anyway. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, voicemail messages, leave them long, like there's information, disguise it, that, so it might be important. Yeah. Uh, just so he has to listen through it. I wish I'd give his own mobile out, but, uh, you know, that, that is just too cruel, but anyone can get him at XFM, and of course we've given out his email before, so, I mean, go mental. There are plenty of ways to torture Carl Pilkington. <laughs> I mean, we've, we, we're doing all we can on a Saturday. <laughs> but we're only two people. But we're only two men. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, um, so listen, um, go, go berserk, we'll, uh, we'll be back next Saturday, and I'm gonna leave with, uh, song for, song for the lovers, song, song for, for the ladies, ladies, whatever, it's a beautiful track. A song for the sunshine. Song for the sunshine, it's Lily White by Cat Stevens. And we've done it. We've, we don't need Carl. Well, there's the darkness. They believe in a thing called love. Carl, do you? This is XFM 104.9. That is my favourite band at the moment. You love them? I, I absolutely love them. I think they're funny. I think they're straight down the line with a little bit of tongue in cheek. Mm. Oh, brilliant. Did you see them on Jules Holland last night? I didn't, night? sadly, no. Brilliant. Were they good? Yeah, absolutely jumped. Oh. I mean, Jules didn't know what to do. <laughs> was he, was he playing to Boogie Woogie? He, they wouldn't let him play Boogie Woogie over the song. Really? That's what, I mean, that's why he stayed back, but, uh, I can't imagine it was very good, though. He shook the- I'm was, surprised you say they were good. It, it was Jules no, wasn't thinking I mean, I, I thought, I, I, I thought, hold on, this is missing something. Yeah. This, this is missing someone from Squeeze vamping over them. <laughs> exactly, But, um, yeah. they did, they did well without him. Extraordinary. Uh, yeah. Well, Here we are, then. We're back. XFM one hundred four point nine. Carl had to leave early last week, but, um, you, can you stay to the end this week, mate, or- Yeah. Yeah? You, don't, you don't need another holiday. Oh! Oh, he's started already. I mean, you Steve's know, made you look like a bit of a twat already. <laughs> and it's well, only five past one. But the only reason you don't go on holiday is because you have to spend money. <laughs> oh, and he's gone straight back! Well, he's gone straight back! <laughs> I can't come back to that. <laughs> oh, it's just, dear. it's just, uh, it's dynamite. It's just absolute, that was, that was oh, searing. Last holiday, the had, last holiday Steve had, he, f- he sort of found a third world country so he could live like a mm. king for a week. It was Cuba, wasn't it? Going to Cuba, amazing. You can leave, we can almost rule the place. <laughs> if it weren't for Castro, I'd have been in charge. Kind of cash I was flashing around. <laughs> they do, do anything for a dollar over there. It's extraordinary, literally. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh. Definitely, and I went to Kenya so, before just, that. So he thought to the prostitute, said no. Mm. You were going. <laughs> yeah, well, it was two dollars. I mean, I'm not made of money. <laughs> did you have a good holiday, Carl? Uh, yeah, it was all right. It's all right. Went down to Cornwall. Now you're going to the monkey sanctuary. There's a lot of people down there, Steve. Well, <laughs> don't look at me, I'm not from Cornwall. Well, you're from that sort of area. Well, not really, but never Genetically, mind. Genetically, means. Right. They're weird. Mm. Well, you must have slotted right in. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they weird? What do they look like? Just all, uh, sort of odd people. Uh, a lot of old people, but not just old, sort of messed up old. What do you mean, messed up old? It's just got, you can't just say that. There's, there's, there's... There was a woman with a funny neck. <laughs> Okay, in what way what, was it funny? Why did she have a funny neck? If you were writing an essay, you wouldn't say there was this woman with a funny neck. How would you describe it? She, uh, sort of had her head, like, pointed down all the time. Like, don't do it, it's his radio. No, but just for you, I don't know what. Yeah. About, uh, yeah. 
Okay, right. So, brilliant. I don't you, know. I was saying to Suzanne, what, what happened, you know, what do you think? Because Suzanne knows everything. That's the good yeah. thing about her being with you. You just ask her, what happened to her? And Suzanne goes, Carl, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't been here before. Does Suzanne, you your girlfriend, or mummy as you call her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sparks are flying. Yeah. I got a little bit of chocolate. Can you just lick a tissue and wipe it off? Oh. No, she said it might have been like, because back in the olden days they carried stuff on the- The olden <laughs> days? What do you mean the olden days? This woman was probably what, 50? Uh, no, she looked about 70. Yeah. But like I do on Cheeky Freak of the Week, right, I always turn it round and we get like something good out something of it. Something positive, yeah. yeah. I said, I said to Suzanne, I bet she finds a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Always staring at the ground, yeah. <laughs> oh so dear. Always, Oh, good. so um, you maybe she just had uh, new shoes and she was admiring them. Yeah. Did you think of that before you point the finger and judge? Mm. Or our necklace was too heavy. <laughs> exactly. So you're back ref refreshed. So uh, what have we got for this week? Have we sort of because we didn't meet last night, which uh, we usually no, meet. No, sort of I, I called you and said it'd be good if we could. Uh, you know, I wasn't getting back into London. Well, I was until up for it. I was up for it. Past seven, yeah. but yeah. yeah, but we all need to be there. It's not yeah. just me and you being there. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, you're absolutely right that I wasn't there yet because I wasn't willing to uh, just be you know, governed by your particular schedule. You want to jet back in from another of your holidays right, it wasn't at a holiday. eight o'clock? Wasn't a holiday though. Well, so what? So you what do you mean? What, 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 what do you mean it wasn't a holiday? What was it? Uh, he was well. It was a treat, wasn't it, for my mum and dad? So it wasn't a holiday. What? I so you didn't enjoy the five days off? You'd rather have been here moaning eight hours a day. Seven hours a day. You see, we said last week that you're always whinging. Here you are whinging now. I'm not and you're saying it's not even a holiday. You're saying it's not even a holiday. What right. was it then? Would like a nurse who took sick children to Florida, would they say having a great holiday? Sorry, what, what, what particular ailment did your parents have for the week that they had to, they had to fly in mm. uh, Carl Pilkington, MD? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Well, all right, it was holiday. Well then. Yeah. Good. Now some honesty, now some truth. So you us. came in, you came back from your holiday, you wanted to start back to work straight away, Steve couldn't be bothered to meet. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. So we've got nothing prepared for this. Well, you can rely on rockbusters. <laughs> right, that's coming We've got up. nothing. <laughs> uh, monkey news. Even though you were stuff. away, you were still working. Still doing stuff. Did you Don't go to the monkey sanctuary? I'll tell you about that. Tell later. us about it. Play a record. Right. What do you want? That's Smashing Pumpkins. Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, I thought yeah, an old yeah, classic yeah. from them. Cherub Rock. Yeah. Smashing Pumpkins, Cherub Rock. That, of course, Rick, is available on their greatest hits. Brilliant. If you want to. I, I mean, that, that's how I rock, so yeah. I'm, I know, I know they, uh, I'm very much the shape of a cherub as well. Well, well indeed, indeed. Naked with a yeah. couple of- And a rosy big arse. And a, tr a trumpet. Yeah. <laughs> Do they have trumpets? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I've just an email here, um, Monkey News. Yeah. From a listener. Yep. Monkey spotted holidaying in Cornwall. <laughs> a chimp, a chimp was spotted holidaying in Cornwall last week after befriending a family of three. One onlooker said it was incredible. He dressed and behaved exactly like a human being. He even settled the hotel bill at the end of their stay. The only telltale sign was his lack of table manners and the incoherent babble when he opened his mouth. <laughs> there we are. So, well, um, we think that, Carl. That's the listeners, Carl. That's oh. Joanne. Oh. Amusing, articulate. Accurate. She remembered exactly who was there and everything, yeah. sitting in the bill. It's all there. So, I mean, even though people think that you're slightly simian, uh, you know, slightly less than human on the evolutionary ladder, they do listen to you. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know who's more stupid in the end, you or the listeners. Well, you may recall, Rick, at the end of last week when Carl had to shoot off early, uh, we issued a little request yeah. for listeners just to bombard Carl's email with um, just pointless emails that really weren't about anything, just to clog up his email for when he returned. Yeah. Rick, they sent them all to us. Brilliant. I mean, that's the kind of listeners that we've got. We've got reams here on our email of just junk. I mean, it's like a Marx Brothers plot, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, ludicrous. just listen. I, listen I got, to what we say. I got one uh, about a shaved cat. Well, that's not pointless. I'll be reading that later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be I'm reading, happy. That'll keep me going for a couple of weeks. Yeah. I'll be reading that. Later. Did you get to the Monkey Sanctuary? Because this was the big thing. You were going into Cornwall, you were going to visit the Monkey Sanctuary. I've never seen someone more excited. You had two days put aside for the Monkey Sanctuary. Oh, I know. How did it go? Monkey World? Um, we were on our way, right? I found like a little, uh, in the little cottage that we had, right? It's like a little, uh, little folder, mm -hmm. you know, with little leaflets in saying if you, you know, if you're into mountains, you want to go here. Yeah. If you're into castles and that. Uh, uh, little monkey world. on the leaflet, right? So I thought, I'll be needing that. Took that out, made sure. That's safe and yeah. that, right? We get in the car, getting ready to go. 
uh, my dad says, where is it? I look on the back. It's in a place called Low or something like that, right? Yeah. So, uh, we're on our way. Can't believe me luck. It's gonna be a great day and all that. Yeah. And then, uh, start looking at the leaflet, right? And, uh, noticed. Didn't have any chimps there. Yeah, it's not, it's not Monkey World. It wasn't a Monkey World. Well, how, what, no. what was it called then? Something like... M m monkey Town. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just, it, it had like woolly monkeys in it. That's, that's what it had what? Woolly monkeys. What are woolly monkeys? Those things that uh, Johnny Vegas off the advert. Right. Loads of them. They're dumped now since ITV Digital yeah. went under, so they just put them in a cage. I don't no, understand. They're woolly, they're, they're like, um, they're sort of like little fluffy, little baboon type things, woolly monkeys. I mean, not, it's not your chimp. It right. is not your, it's not your classic chimpanzee. So did the car screech to a halt? It, it was like, it was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like the mission in Armageddon. As you said, a boat. <laughs> <laughs> we're on the way back. <laughs> so how far have uh, you got before you bothered to read the leaflet? Uh, uh probably about five miles right. away from where we were. So what did you do with yourself? You must have been distraught. We well, went they to... broke down and then they heard banjo music. <laughs> yeah, dun, yeah, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. No, I went to a, uh, sort of a, an amusement place. Right, I'd, I'd love to see you in that. What, with, with putting those coins in so it has to roll down and they go flat and then an arm pushes it them. It was one of them. Really? But I I'd spent years on that when I was little. Well, there's oh. a new one. I can't be bothered explaining it, but it's a con. Uh, we went to this place, right? My mum and dad had been there before and yeah. they said, you'll love it. It's brilliant. It's got like a, a war bit in it. A war bit, right. Yeah, like, because they know I'm into tanks and stuff. Yeah. So you'll be loving that. So, sorry, I didn't know you were into tanks. No. Well, they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Right. He's gone from one of his childhood passions to where they're all right. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> Go on. And, uh, but it was, it was, it was awful. I mean, my mum and dad had been there before and he said, no, you'll love it, but yeah. it was a, like, a really miserable day. Sure. Right? Uh, all the rides and that were broke. Yeah. Broke? Uh, it just reminds you of Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> My dad just ended up, uh, he was more interested, there was a really fat family there. <laughs> well, presumably he was breaking into the machines, trying to scoop off the cash. <laughs> no, I like the fact that those poor fat family were going, why are those people looking at us? Yeah. Oh, do you want to ride one? No, but they, they we're were- not, We're not a ride. They were massive and he's just like, look at that, look at the state of that. A whole family. Yeah. Just, you know, fat. Bloaters, yeah. Oh, uh, really? No, down. but he does, he does, he does, because fat, there's no, no need for it, is there? <laughs> and he, he was really like, oh God. And then he wanted to follow them into the house of mirrors to see what they look like. But my mum, my mum had got bored. She went off to buy a little uh, Snow White figure. She couldn't believe her luck. It was only two ninety nine. Yeah. She thought it was going to be really expensive. Sure. So she she's bought one of them. Yeah. Uh, so she enjoyed that. And then my dad says, "Come on, we go in. It's rubbish. This." <laughs> what well, the fat family wouldn't <laughs> let him play with them. So uh, he just said on the way home, he said, "I can safely say." That I never want to go there again before I die. <laughs> so, that was that. And then we went home. Why would he ever give you that information? In case it was like a, a secret birthday present. Yeah. Oh God, what if they get me a trip to here? Or if he's in a coma and you go, I'll tell you what, I'll Dad. tell you to bring him out of it. <laughs> that fat couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. By his bedside. Yeah, yeah. But, but Suzanne said she now realises why I am the way I am. After yeah. spending like a week with them. Well, they, said, they, told, they told her that they dropped you on your head as a kid or? No, just, just like, you know, the way they act and that. Right, yeah. Um, I no, they were saying things like, Suzanne, so, uh, why is the moon out at night in the seventh <laughs> of the day? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, God, was, there's it, three of them. <laughs> Suzanne, can you tie my shoelaces again? <laughs> <laughs> it was the bit when my dad said, don't waste money on a coffin for him, just put him in a bin bag. <laughs> <laughs> Your father said that. About himself. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a great idea. I'm glad you mentioned that, because that is great. That gives me an idea. Coldplay, God put a smile upon your face on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Reading the paper yesterday, Rick, they uh, were talking about the fact that Blair has been, I think, he's been in Greece um, discussing EU matters. Oh, yeah. And they used uh, the old Trojan horse analogy yeah. to say, you know, here's a particular policy and it seems like they're trying to sneak, sneak in, some, in sneak in some kind yeah. of dubious Disguised ideas. Disguised as something else. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's always struck me, ever since I was first introduced to the Trojan horse theory, I never understood how it had come about. Do you know what I mean? So, I, 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 Carl has got a frown on him, like a thing I haven't seen. Yeah. 
uh, uh, Carl, not Tony Tro- Blair is the Prime Minister. <laughs> 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 you know what the Trojan horse was? Go on. Um, Have you come across this before? Have you heard of it before? Um, wasn't that Ascot or anything? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Well, the Trojan horse, what happened was, uh, it's, it's a famous kind of Greek story, um, about the fact that, uh, the Greeks- In olden laid, times, Carl, yeah, olden times olden is, times, you know, specifically. The yeah. The Greeks laid siege to Troy for six years. Um, Wait. Basically, things had got out of hand, uh, I think the Trojans had done something with Helen, and someone else was annoyed. Anyway, it all got very complicated. It got out of hand, and the, uh, you know, the Greeks... Helen, the one with the mashed up face, because they used to use it to launch ships. Hmm. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> the Greeks laid siege to Troy for six years, right, and they weren't getting anywhere. They were outside the gates, they were saying, let us in, they weren't, they were blah, blah, blah. So what they did was, they all disappeared, they all- they, well, they wanted to get in and kill everyone. Yeah, exactly. That's why they wouldn't be letting in. But they couldn't get inside the city walls. So what they did was, they left as a gift for the Tro- Trojans, they left an enormous wooden horse, okay, uh, as a gift, and then they all buggered off. Like 40 foot high, 50 foot long, I mean a big- you know, Big wooden horse. an arc of and a horse. And the Trojans wheeled it into the city. So that's nice. Thought, what a lovely gift. Yeah. And lo and behold, who was hiding inside? But the entire Greek army, they the left Lord. out, killed everyone in their sleep. Yeah. All right, and that's where that famous idea of a Trojan horse has come from, you know, sneaking something in, disguised as something else. Uh, All right. Yeah. Okay? So if you ever... Yeah. He doesn't really understand, does he? No, but... To be honest, nor do I. Well, I, this is the problem I've always had with this. Because I, I, I don't understand who comes up with the idea. I mean, but I, d- I can't think that was the best idea. Well, no, no. There must be other ways. If they come up with that, how long did it take them to go? When they said, one, one, one before I said, oh, I'm not, oh, whoa, 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 um, can I have a word? Go on, yeah, General, right, yeah. um, I've got an idea. Yeah. Build a big horse, right, hide inside it, and then, then, ah. I know what you're thinking, they won't let us in even in the horse. Yeah. Leave it as a gift. Brilliant. Right. Who are you? That's the best idea. Are you the guy that came up with, <laughs> why don't we get a giant bra <laughs> and twing everyone over the yeah, horse? Yeah. Let's get a, let's get a hundred foot ruler, and you know like at school we used to like flick the teacher's yeah. ass with like a, right, I could flick you over one at a time. Right. On this giant <laughs> Thanks ruler. Thanks for your idea. <laughs> it's on the table. Yeah. We've got a couple of our suggestions on the way. What about a million elastic bands tied together, yeah, and you all hold it down and then I just let you go. Right. And you all ping over and then you kill him in their sleep. You're the best tactician we've got, are you? Uh, what- the other thing is, right, these people open the- for some reason open the door. Well, I don't understand. Firstly, that suddenly the the army that's laid siege to them for six years has disappeared yeah. in their place, an enormous gift of a giant wooden horse. Oh, they probably don't want to kill us now. But the, what they've done is they've built us a yeah. They've a built horse. us a great gift. Presumably there was a giant kind of card or something. Yeah. You know, um, something for you. You know, sorry about the laying siege and everything. Forgive you. Yeah. Here's an enormous gift. Is it? <laughs> Here's an enormous Trojan horse. We know it's what you've always wanted. We're, we're not inside it. <laughs> exactly. Why did they write that? Yeah. That's suspicious. But it's, well, wheel, mean, it, wheel it in anyway. But in terms of it as an idea initially, I mean, we're gonna give them a gift, well what should we do? We could bake an enormous quiche, <laughs> be inside that, we could have an enormous soap on a rope as a It's the fact that it's an enormous horse, yeah. an enormous wooden horse as a gift anyway. I don't know if this was a, a popular gift at the time, but it's also the stupidity of the Trojans saying, brilliant, I've always wanted an enormous wooden horse, well what are we gonna do with it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Where are we we'll gonna wheel it in anyway, leave it. Just wheel but, it in look, anyway. Wheel it in, let's go to sleep, let's worry about it tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. That, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> But it's this idea of going, someone going, right, is this definitely the best idea? And they go, yeah, and they look to the carpenter. Yeah. And he goes, well, it's gonna take a while. Yeah, we've got to get wood. We've got to get other that. Well, you haven't put a door in. Yeah. How are we gonna get out there? doesn't look like a horse. It is. This is the worst horse I've ever seen. Why, it's like a cow. Wow, well, yeah, the udders where we hide. <laughs> There's a horse. It's got no tail. It's, yeah, about that's the rope that you climb up. But I don't know if it's one of those things where, again, because we kind of learn these things at school, that somewhere along the line, the truth of it has disappeared, and we are... Well, I imagine it's lost a bit in translation. Yeah. Because, uh... In e- Eohippus in Greek means giant tank. <laughs> right, so that yeah. actually was a Sherman, yeah. and it burst through and it shot them all. Yeah, but yeah. of course, down the years they've tried. Look at Carl's face. Look at Carl's face. If everyone on webcam, Carl, just keep that face and look up to the camera, right? Just right. Get a, get a look at that now. Play a record, Carl. Educating Carl. We should bring that back. We should bring that back. Yeah. What do you want to learn about next week? We've told you about the Trojan horse. Uh. Know anything about any freaks? Oh, that is big tonight. Can't stop growing. Oh.
placebo. This picture on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right. So you've been educated there, haven't you? The yeah, Trojan so horse. Yeah, yeah. The Trojan horse. And that's of course where the phrase "Beware Greeks bearing gifts" comes from. <laughs> Silence again. Yeah. You haven't heard that one? Go on. What? What's that again? Beware Greeks bearing gifts. Right. What do you think that means? Uh, I don't know. I mean, what is that? Is that used worldwide or what? Will they say that in Greece as well or? Because uh. <laughs> imagine Christmas Day is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't actually mean beware of Greeks wearing gifts. It's more to do with like, maybe it's too good to be true or, you know. It's just the opposite to don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Well, for probably where it came from was Justin one. from Southend emailed in, he just said, uh, for the Trojans not to have spotted that it was a trick, they must have been the biggest bunch of moronic, mm, yeah, ever to have walked the earth. Does Carl have any Trojan in him by any chance? <laughs> Cheeky, innit? it? Eh? What? Never <laughs> mind. No, I think that probably proves it. <laughs> I thought of another one I like as well. I was saying, you might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. I've never heard, I don't think I've heard that. I have heard, but I don't think I've ever used it in common parlance. Well, it's like, if you're gonna do something, you know, we might as well go the whole hog, depending on the, the outcome. Be because it's based on reality, that's why I like it, because obviously the poor people used to poach, and if they were caught stealing, you know, a sheep or anything, they would be hung. So if you're gonna get caught, don't steal a lamb, you know, at least feed your family for a few weeks. Right, sure. Kill a sheep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually hung, but killing a sheep. Oh, your dad would be in trouble, down in oh. Wales, stealing stuff from that, uh, oh. from that oh. phone box. Well, he, he has a couple of sayings, right? Your uh, father? Mm. Yeah, I've, I've never asked him what they mean. Um, <laughs> Why would you? Ask what, Suzanne. One is, uh, don't try and teach your granny to suck eggs. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? That means, uh, it's patronising to, 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 of course, of course I know that. You're, you're talking to someone who knows more about this subject than you. But how did that happen then? How did that saying come about? Well, it's not. It, it's it's a totally made up thing. It's like your granny sucks eggs, doesn't she? Because she's she's older than you, and it's probably a lost art or something. All right. Uh, and the other one, um, don't sucks don't eggs. Sucks yeah. eggs. Yeah. Sucks eggs. Sorry, I thought you said something else. Uh, yeah. Don't nudge your granny when she's shaving. What? what? Sorry. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. Don't nudge. Your, sorry. sorry well, that's slower. That, I can't. Don't, don't, don't nudge, nudge your, your granny when she's having a shave. Well, what is that in context? Because I can't work out what the analogy is there, because that might just be you, you when you were little, you used to run up to your granny while she was shaving or something. But what, uh, why is your granny shaving? Well, no, what, uh, what context is that said in? Tell me the last time your dad ever said that and I'll try and work out what it means. Uh, can't remember. I can't, I, I, I don't are know. Are you sure these aren't specific to your granny? <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, why are you nudging your granny? She was going, yeah. get lost, Carl. She was shaving off her moustache. Or oh. giving herself a Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> That's grotesque. <laughs> suck an egg, suck an egg, suck an egg. Suck an egg. That oh, That's oh a, yeah. God. That's made, that's <laughs> yeah, made, that's made it, it worse. worse. Carl's granny sucking eggs whilst I- uh, <laughs> That Keep is my- Keeping herself a Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> We've no idea, I don't know what that means. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. What, yeah. Parmesan? I, d I don't know, maybe someone knows. You might be right, maybe. Well, email in, tell yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Rockbusters, Carl. Yeah. Should we get the ball rolling? Let me just find the, uh, yeah, the yeah, gifts yeah, here, the yeah. little treats. We've got the album from The Coral, you know what I think about that. We've got uh, Comfort in Sound Feeder. Well, it's just a novelty record, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so. we've got, uh, on DVD, more great comedy moments, favourite clips from the best of contemporary BBC comedy. We've got Partridge on the front there, we've got uh, one of the guys from Red Dwarf, and, uh, Brilliant. No, there's <laughs> good stuff on there. Smash Hits, The Reunion, more great 80s tunes, Catch a Goo Goo's on there, uh, plus some stuff- Too from Shy? The <laughs> it is too yeah, shy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, let me see if you can guess which one's from on. Tiffany. Uh, well, yeah, I know it, the only one. I uh, think I'm, we're alone now. Yeah, I think we're alone, yeah. Um, Mel and Kim? Uh, Respectable? Mm hmm. Human League? That'd be, oh wow, what would, it be? would they have got Don't You Want Me? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Ta Lies Take On Me? Yep, yeah. well done. Um, Madness? Baggy Trousers. Of course. Uh, Kim Wilde? Kids in America? Yeah, so there's just all those treats. If you if, yeah. if, if you like a song from an 80s band, it's probably on there. Yeah, okay. Plus we've also got on uh, VHS, uh, Graham Norton, some kind of best of compilation from his TV show. So, uh, there are the, um, 
Hold on, is it, is it the one where he talks to sort of female gay icons and, and looks at the internet? Because <laughs> that's my favourite one. Um, right, there you go, let's do Rockbusters. Right, email then. only, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk if you know the answer. Right, first one. Uh, bit of a cryptic clue, if you haven't heard it before. Well, not cryptic, we're wrong. <laughs> um, what, what is Carl thinking? If you go into France by boat, I'd get your fags on there, because it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> 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 Imagine Bob Holness. <laughs> sorry, you, we're out of time. I, uh, sorry, your minute's up. You've won nothing. I was reading that question out. <laughs> so, right. so what's the well, let's do it again. I want it to be exactly the same, word perfect. I bet you it will change uh, all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost it. Go into France, buy yourself a boat yeah. and the fags are okay. cheaper. Okay, okay, fingers on the buzzers. Um, you've only got ten seconds to win the, uh, the gold run. Okay, first up. Here, I'll tell you what, no, seriously, if you're thinking of going to France, well don't, you know, because go on the ferry and get the fags there, because it's cheaper. Go on. <laughs> right, so that one again, uh, if you want to buy some fags, you're going over to France on the boat, get them on there, because you'll save a few quid. B. F. B.F. Right. B.F. Okay. okay. Right, the second one. Um, mm. this little, uh, <laughs> foreign cafe is growing its own steak. <laughs> <laughs> this little foreign cafe is growing its own steak. Yeah. <laughs> this little foreign cafe is growing its own steak. Go on. D. Alright. Right. Okay. And the last one, uh, uh, <laughs> Is uh, that part of it? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. The Jamaican fella might have screamed oh, this on the uh, right. on the Titanic. What? <laughs> the Jamaican fella might have scre might have screamed this on the Titanic. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what's it start with? It's uh, C D. That one. <laughs> the Jamaican fella might have screamed this on the Titanic. Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Please don't phone in. Um, if you can get those, we just don't want to talk to you. <laughs> 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 Better Nelly? Yeah, 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 Nelly, ride with me. Uh, that's featuring City Spud. I don't know if you're <laughs> aware of that, but, uh, there we are. Good, nice summer tune. Excellent. Carl, tell, uh, Steve what you just told me when Steve was in the toilet then. Right, you know, I'd, I'd just been away with my mum and dad and that. Mm. And, uh, one of the things I always like doing is having a good chat with my dad about stuff he got up to when he was a kid and that. Yeah. Right, because he got up to loads of stuff and every time I see him, he tells me something and I think, well, it's like, why are you just telling me that now? It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Right? So, uh... <laughs> I, 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 I mean, to me, he's kind of like Ronnie Biggs or someone. He's just the most extraordinary kind of well, this, this character. Well, this happened, right? character. I, I can't remember. There was a delay yesterday. There was problems on the Paddington line. Yeah. And he was saying, oh, our trains aren't what they used to be. Sure. Um... He said, you know, he said I was looking- They used to be horses, didn't they? Well, he, he was like, he was looking in the booklet, and it was saying how you can have your bags collected if you want, but it costs you a fiver. Yeah. So that's outrageous. Sure, of course. Right, so he said, that's the problem with this country. Uh, we've got good with computers and that, but when it comes to, like, getting service, it's gone out the window. Yeah. Right? So he said, when I worked on the trains, you know, and he was going on like this, that and the other, so I said, oh, right, I didn't know you worked on the trains. He said, uh, yeah, yeah, when I was 18, Right, it was his job to get the coal, right, and chuck it in the engine. Uh-huh. Right. And one day he's in, uh, he's in Grand Central Station in Manchester, which is now the GMEX Centre. Right. Right. And that was like the main station. And, uh, he was in there. The fella who should have been sort of driving the train, yeah. right, he said, oh, I'm just nipping to the pub. Sure. So you just stay here, keep the engine topped up and stuff. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, oh, right, For right, a quick right. getaway. Yeah. Right? <laughs> So, uh, so the fella goes in, in the pub, and my dad's in there, you know, putting the coal on, he, he did his bacon and eggs on a little, uh, a little shovel. Yep, yep. And, uh, anyway, fella comes up, he says, right, can you move the, uh, train forward now? Oh, blimey. So he was like, oh. So he didn't want to say, oh, the fella's in the pub, because he'd know, he'd say, well, what's he doing in the pub, he should be working, right? So he said, yeah, 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 no problem, I'll sort it out. Right, so he, uh, puts it, puts it into gear, or whatever you do on, on them trains, Sure, right? puts it into first, yeah. Starts going forward. Now, people who don't know about trains, something that I learnt is if you're carrying a load of coal or whatever on the back of it, they don't have brakes on each carriage, right? It's only the engine that has brakes on it. Uh -huh. So when you pull the brakes on the on the engine, the whole weight of what it's pulling 
is pushing you forward. Sure. Right? Yeah. So he doesn't realise this though, because he's uh, he's just used to cooking bacon and eggs and chucking coal. Of course, and yeah. Like. So you've got to slam the brakes on sooner than you would normally. Yeah. Well, you have to anticipate it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, he didn't know that, Could so you, yeah. he's pulling in. He's thinking, right, well, put the brakes. Talking. I'll put the brakes on now. Yeah. Right. Puts the brakes on. The train just keeps going. He's going. Oh god, it's not stopping. Sure. It ploughs right through the signal box. <laughs> right. Uh, loads the of damage. Pulling the signals, don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> loads of loads of damage done. Apparently, it, it if it was today's money, yeah, it'd be about three to four <laughs> million pounds worth of damage. It it shut the station oh, off god. for four weeks. Um. But he didn't lose his job. The fella had lost his job, the f one who was in the in the pub. Yeah. Um, he said the funny thing was, he said like four million pounds worth of damage. Um, he did his ankle, uh, his, uh, his wrist in. He had three weeks off sick and got paid. <laughs> so it's brilliant. So... I love your family. It's extraordinary. The Pilkinson gene. Weird, isn't it? I'd like to see a documentary following you and your family. You'd have to get the family involved. No, the sort of stuff my dad goes on about. They'd never put it on Sally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blair, out of time on XFM 104.9. We ought to give those Rockbusters clues again. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, We've had very one. few contributions so far, Carl. I think you've really started. Uh, you, this might be it. I've told you, you're on thin ice. If this, if this goes wrong, if it's rubbish, and if everyone doesn't get them all, that's the end of Rockbusters. Right. Well, uh, the first one again, right? Yeah. If you go out of France, right, by boat, <laughs> you might as well get your fags whilst you're on that, because you'll save a few quid. Right? <laughs> Different every time. B, <laughs> B, F, B, F is the initials of the artist that that little cryptic clue makes up. The second one. Little foreign cafe, it's growing its own steak. Right? That's D. <laughs> Little foreign cafe, it's growing its own steak. D. <laughs> yeah. And the last one, uh, if there was a Jamaican fella on the Titanic when it went down, he'd, he'd probably scream this. <laughs> C. D. Right? So email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Yeah, right? they're not right. flooding in, but yeah. Well, we'll see how we do. Carl, have we still got monkey news? We've got monkey news coming up. Now, you must be disappointed because you didn't make it to the monkey sanctuary, but you still managed to scrape together monkey news on your holiday. Yeah. That's so impressive. I've found some of that. We've got- How, how do you- how do you get so many breaks and holidays? Because you went- you went away with Suzanne's <coughs> parents, you've just been away with your parents, that's a couple of weeks, ten days, so that's probably about three weeks in all. You had that- you went to Manchester, you were- you had that day off because your trousers were wet. I mean, and you've, you know, I, mean, I suppose because you've, you've only got one job and, you know, I've got a lot more, this is just one of my jobs. But I mean, do, don't you ever count your blessings, go, God, thank God I just, I can have time off, I, I don't mm -hmm. work too hard, you know, I'm not stressed too no, much. No, no, no. It's uh, just all to do with when you do work, do a lot. So <laughs> I've, I get a lot done. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm always doing stuff. I mean, even though, when I was in Cornwall, right, I'm sat there on the grass. Mm. Um, oh, I'd love to just sit on the grass. Oh, yeah, you're too busy with that one, I know, yeah, well, you know. M me dad and Susanna are playing crib, right? I'd sort of fallen out with him at <laughs> Your dad and Susanna are playing crib. Why did you fall out with Because you do live him? in the 1940s. Yeah, why had you fallen out? Because with crib, have you ever played crib? Yeah. Right, you've got to be pretty good at maths. Sure. Well, you've got to make your cards add up to 15 and all Well, yeah, <laughs> I was just gonna, I was just gonna correct you on you've got to be good at maths. Yeah. What, what, algebra, quantum physics, what? No, just, just adding up. Adding up to fifteen. Brilliant. I mean, I mean, you almost do it on your fingers. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you could in Cornwall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my dad's, uh, really good at maths, and like, he said, how many have you got? And, and he always counts, isn't it? It's like fifteen and two, fifteen and four, fifteen and six, three, three for your hat, one, t and all that, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And he adds it up really one quick. One for his knob. Right, so I was like, right, hang on a minute. And he goes, no, what do you mean, hang on? I don't know, what, what have you got? He goes, oh, forget it. I said, this isn't, this isn't fun if you're gonna start getting all arty with me. Sure. So, forget it! Yeah. I love it! But he's only, I'm sure he's, I don't know him, but I'm sure he's just winding you up. It, like, his, his victory is you going, ah, oh, forget it, I'm not playing. Well, anyway, right, so it doesn't matter. I think I'll go off and do some prep, right? Yes. Do some research for Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Found one of Suzanne's magazines, right? Uh, flicking through, because there's always interesting stuff in there. There was something about, um, uh, about swingers. 
Right. And I was like, what's all that about? Yeah. And it had an interview with some people talking about, you know, how they, uh, sleep about of it. Yeah. And I thought, if my wife looked like that, I probably would. Because <laughs> uh, there was a few pictures of them and they were all pretty ugly. Yes. And I thought, right. So I took that in, soaked that up, thought, there you go. Uh, carried on reading. There was a bit in there about how women still have crushes, right? Yes. Uh, and the woman was going on about, uh, how she's 38, right? But she still fancies Chris Martin from Coldplay. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, even though it'll never happen, she's still got that little bit in her head yeah. that thinks one day she'll leave Gwyneth, right, and end up with, with, with her, right? Right. Anyway, so I'm flicking, I'm thinking this is a bit boring, but I'm flicking through it all, and, uh... Is this says, a, is this a Rockbusters clue? No, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I read, I read further on, read th further on, right, and, uh, she said, you know, we, we, I like to go out with my mates, and we come up with lists in pubs, of people who like, oh, you know, they, they'd be nice to go out with. She also came up with a, a list of unlikely lust objects, I think she called them. Yeah. Guess who was in that list? Ricky Gervais. Think again. Carl Pilkington. Right. Next one. Johnny Vegas. Said, lanky co-writer. <laughs> Rubbish. Lanky co-writer. What do you mean, lanky co-writer? Well, don't need to say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he said... <laughs> Hang on, wait a minute. Let's not talk about... I, I don't want you laughing at my expense. I'm an unlikely <laughs> lust object. Yeah, but... But, but you, you... Yeah, what was it called? The, the list? Uh, the... The unlikely lust object. Yes. Yeah. You were in there, right? Who else was? Well, you weren't in there. Richard, hey, Richard Maidley. Fine. Yeah. He's a good-looking guy. Alistair Campbell. Brilliant. Yeah. Another handsome dude. Hmm. What are you talking about? How can you, how are you, what, you, you think I'm ashamed or embarrassed about that? I'm proud of it. What magazine was it? Mm. I need to buy a couple of copies. Yeah, it, it was. <laughs> need to get did a t-shirt made. It, 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 yeah, and did she leave her number? Yeah. <laughs> what, so what magazine was it? Just, I'm, I'm just out of interest. Just, I think it's know. called Red. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. But now you've dissed those people that have put themselves in their swingers because you've said they're ugly. So now we know what magazine it is. People are gonna look at that. People are gonna look at that poor woman and they're gonna know you think She's a hog. No, but so, I, I think they even know. Was there a picture <laughs> of the woman who know. had drawn up the list of unlikely lust objects? Mm -hmm. What was she like? I wouldn't waste my time. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, mate. I know you're on my side. <laughs> the Thrills on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me. Steve Merchant, object of unlikely lust object, Steve Merchant. I'd like to have that now, prefixing my name everywhere I'm written about. I know, yeah. Did he make the freak list? Woo! Which is, in a, which is a different magazine, isn't it? And I'm joking, of course, Carl Pilkington, a man of sort of quiet, quiet dignity and, <laughs> and in a way, he's got his own sort of inner beauty, hasn't he, Carl? Not really. Don't you think? Well, I'll tell you why I don't think it is, because the woman that wrote the piece, saying that I was an unlikely lust object, has just emailed in. And Carl, you've offended her quite considerably. What did he say? I wouldn't waste my time, is what you said. She's re repeated oh, that. Yeah. I wouldn't waste my time, the flaming cheek. Although it's a horrible picture, I am, of course, in real life, a vision of loveliness. I'm not 38, I'm 25. I don't think Stephen's that unlikely lust object. A sense of humour is important, and he's welcome to my phone number if he wants it. Is <laughs> she... A sense of humour is important, that's a down Is she a swinger? Uh, stop it! Don't have a go at the I'm woman. Not, I'm, mess, I'm messing about. She knows I'm messing about. Well, how are you messing about? You I've told you this though. I've told you that anyone could be listening, haven't I? I've told you that before. Things you say, and and you, but we encourage him. We say, "What does she look like?" We, but it's meant to be rhetorical. That was a joke. That was Steve's joke. What does she look like? I.e., him joking, like, "Oh, I, I'll call her up because I'm on a list," and then you have to say that. I mean, uh, that's what I mean. So chances are, if. You know, if she likes Stephen, she hasn't seen him, she listens to the radio. So, mm. the likelihood is that, you know, she was listening to this show. Yeah. So, think. Will I drop the thing I was going to do about Lisa Riley? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> She's not listening. Some she's, people deserve it. She's still at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> what, from Tuesday? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> There's an all, all you can eat place going out of business as we speak. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> She's back. You killed me. I got a little bambino. Please leave now. Please leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. No, but she knows we're only messing. This, yeah. Uh, this Everyone knows thing. you're only messing. We're all only messing. I hope we don't offend anyone of, uh, you know, any kind out there. We're only joking, aren't we, Carl? Yeah. Say something nice about her. What can you remember of the picture that you could that you could say was good? Maybe she was wearing some nice things. Wasn't anything to be honest. I'll have another look and have a look. I think she had a nice shirt, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Forthcoming single from British Sea Power. That's called Carry On. I love it. It's great. It's fantastic. Yes. On XFM 104.9. What do you make, Carl, of these people? I was reading a paper today. They've been queuing up for 12 hours last night for the new Harry Potter book. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Like it that. really annoys me. Everything. Uh, uh, oh, God. It really annoys me. But who has to. I mean, I know it's just a kind of willful sort of stubbornness. I, 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 I see adults yeah. reading it, you know. I, I, oh. Well, I was up in Hampstead last night, and uh, there's a, a Waterstones branch of that, and there were a couple of people outside queuing. Waiting for it to open. Um, what they look like? Well, I mean, things what, that they're like the ones that come out of a forbidden, pl forbidden planet on a yeah, Thursday. Yeah, I mean, what do you yeah. expect? There was one guy. I mean, I don't mean to disrespect him, but he was a big bloater, shorts, wearing shorts. I don't want to see his big fleshy legs. He looked like John O'Coleman, if I'm not. Well, there's nothing wrong with John O'Coleman. He wore a knapsack. Are. They always seem to have knapsacks for some reason. Well, they got old. They got old papers in there, haven't they? <laughs> exactly. Got a Probably. nine year supply of well, There was about four of them. There was a couple of women, a couple of guys. All looked basically the same. They were interchangeable, and. um we get an they email were there from them in a minute. <laughs> yeah, we're getting email. <laughs> I am the fat bloater with fleshy legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I recognise your description. I like to read these books whilst listening to XFM <laughs> of a Saturday. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was sort of watching them from where I was, and I and they were there, must have been there for about an hour and a half. They were obviously strangers. They'd all they, their common interest was Harry Potter. They were reading. They were sort of chatting to each other for about an hour and a half. So as I'm leaving, I wander past them. An hour and a half in to them having met each other, the conversation is, uh, all I heard was, uh, huh. well, of course, apparently she cried when she finished the last one. And I uh, thought, they what, they, they got, they've not moved on, the conversation had not moved on. No, they might have been talking about Dawn French, you know, her chocolate orange, <laughs> yeah, by then. Yeah. And then she <laughs> cried when she finished the last one yeah. once. Yeah. But, but um, um, I yeah. got no time for them. I, just, no, am you I. Know, pop into Walrus now. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, get I'm it tomorrow, read then. You're, not, you're gonna get home at half one and start reading it. <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. So you can put it on the internet. Oh, God. Your opinions. Oh, it annoys me. It is extraordinary. Uh, the whole kind of, the whole kind of Harry Potter phenomenon has passed me by. I, I know, I know. Well, people, good, good luck to her, you know. But you meet adults who are, um, you say, what are you doing? Like, I'm just rereading Harry Potter. What, you couldn't follow it the first I know. time? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's not her fault, you know, she no, made three hundred million pounds by writing a few books for I'm her sure kids. Very well good, well yeah. done. But, um, I'm sure they're, I mean, I'm not sure they're very good, but, uh, I'm, I haven't read them, I'm, I'm sure they're not. But no, I don't know. Well, I've, don't I've no, 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 I'm joking. Well, I've, so I've you no idea. A book about a little wizard. <laughs> <laughs> With glasses. Yeah, and make millions. <laughs> you, you think it's so easy. If you think it's so easy, you do it. You, you like him, because you look a bit like him. Oh. Wow. Wow. You know. I wonder if he's on a... Uh, that wish list, that that woman who emailed in, why was she making a list of unlikely... Can we leave this now? No, but I mean, what was it, what was context was it? It was like, here's my top ten weird looking fellas that I no. do. What was it? <laughs> no, no, but what, what was the, what was, she was talking about what? What was, she'd started talking about, what, body waxes and went, and by the way, while I'm here, here's ten blokes that I would if I had to, and they're a bit weird, you'll be surprised. What was the context? I forgot. <laughs> He's scared to say anything now. He's scared to say anything. Oh, bless I, him. I just was looking at a picture because I was attracted to it because she was good looking and that didn't read on. <laughs> that all right? <laughs> well done. That's uh, got you out of that little mess. Yeah, yeah. Well but, uh, Harry Potter. Yeah. Can't be honest with it. Have you read them? Uh, no, because the, the first time it came out, uh, I was a bit confused, wasn't I? Because I thought it was about Of course you were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course what? What? This is a what? It's a book. No, I, I, I got confused with the little, uh, the little rabbit. I thought it was her, didn't I? You talked about it when Beatrix it Beatrix first... Potter. Yeah, I got, I got mixed up with that, so I sort of missed out on the first one anyway. <laughs> you so were just running around late. confused. So it was like, like <laughs> yeah. too, it was sort of too late to get into it, I think, after... Yeah, it's too late now, yeah. Um... It's impossible. 
Same Most with Shakespeare. Thing... If you weren't around, you know, the day, <laughs> the day he wrote the first ones, there's no point in going back. But it's all the fuss that she's getting as well, like, um... Well, I think it's because she's a British industry now, isn't she? I mean, it must have made, what, billions? Well, it's the perfect success story. She writes a, a story for her children and it becomes a worldwide phenomenon, you know? It's not cynical, it's just... It's just a great story. Didn't your dad ever pop anything down in writing? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, my mum wanted to do it. Yeah? Um, there's been loads of things, little inventions she's come up with and that, but she's been too busy doing other stuff. But she used to come up with stories for me as a kid. That I'm sure, if they came out, they'd be a success. Yeah. Go on. Do you remember any of them? Uh, there was one about a little red car. I can't remember how that ended. Uh, but the one that was really good was about a, uh, a kid who gets, uh, a dog, right? Um, but it's quite an old dog. This is gonna be an episode of the Walt ones, yeah. isn't it? And then right. go on. Go on. And, uh, he's playing with the dog and that, but it starts getting a bit old. It's about 15 or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, he goes, oh, it's rubbish, this dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would love that one for kids. <laughs> I would love that one. Tommy went, oh, mummy, my dad's, oh, no, no. kill it then. <laughs> kill it then. She's like, yeah, just throw it in the lake. I'll get you another one. <laughs> Do you want a Nintendo? Yeah. Kick the rabbit to death then. <laughs> or no <laughs> food for you. Oh, for Brilliant. No, no, come no, on, no, 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 Jump, Van Halen, on XFM 104.9. Right, come on and Carl, we've got a lot to fit in now. We've insulted <laughs> a lot of people, only about 25 minutes to go. We've got monkey news, we've got rock busters. Have we got a cheeky figure of the week this week? Could crumb it in, see how we do. Do we <laughs> want to hear the end of Carl's story? Yeah, what's really the, the, the kid, little, little Timmy and his, his, his 15 year old dog Lucky, got a bit bored with it. Right, so he said, oh mum, you know, this dog's rubbish and that, I'm sick of it. Yeah. So she goes... How old were you when your mum was telling you this story? <laughs> uh, I don't know, about four. Okay. It wasn't last week on holiday. Uh, <laughs> no, right. So, uh, so she goes, oh alright then, we'll get you another one. Yeah. She goes, brilliant. What did you do with the old one? Just kept it but didn't sort of play with it or anything. <laughs> 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 just, just ostracised it. <laughs> it uh, yeah. Some of its own free will, or curled up and died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what did so you get him? What sort of dog? I think it was a little, uh, little baby, like Labrador puppy, mm -hmm. little puppy. Yeah. Yeah, Labrador. Right. Good one. Well, good choice. Good choice for a second dog. So, um, yeah. So I'm anyway. loving this story. <laughs> so I am actually loving this story. So Where does he live? I, th I don't know. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. It was near a, near a lake. Oh, well, that's where they were getting rid of all the yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We're, we're getting that. Will make sense in a minute, right? Mm. So, uh, so. He's got the little dog, he's playing around with it, he's mm. playing with its belly and stuff, he's thinking this is brilliant, best dog I've ever had, right? And the other dog's sat in the corner looking all fed up, yeah. right? So, uh... I like this story. So he says, he says to his mum, right, I'm taking, uh, little puppy down the park. Yeah. And she goes, well, take the old one with you. And he goes, oh, do we have to? It's a moral, I bet the old one saves him. So, yeah. so, he goes, oh, do we have to? She goes, yeah, it still needs a walk and that. It's crapping all over the house, right? Yeah. So, he takes it down the park, right, and uh, he's playing around and he's playing near the, near the lake, right? Is the puppy near the lake, Carl? Because this is what's worrying me. Yeah. Puppy's near the lake, yeah. right? That jumps in, yeah. the kid goes, oh god, he jumps in, remembers he can't swim. Yeah, idiot. Right? This kid is based on you, isn't it? <laughs> Almost certainly. Flapping about, water's going everywhere, he's going, I can't, oh god, and he, it, like, he wants the puppy to help him, but the puppy's just like drowning as well. Yeah. yeah. The old dog comes up, drags them both out. He goes, I can't believe it. You know, I said I was fed up with you. Yeah. You saved me life. Yeah. He gets home and he says to his mum, Kill the little one. The puppy. Kill the puppy. Yeah. So it's good little. Good what little does he story. say when he gets home? He said, I don't need the puppy now. I've got a Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Genius. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, so the moral of that story well, is just follow your whims. They just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you get bored, get bored and get, <laughs> yeah. get another puppy. Get another dog. If you get bored with the old one again, just do it again. I mean, yeah. just eventually, you know, get something yeah, that you like for a little- Yeah, 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 yeah. That's brilliant. That is a brilliant story, though. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, that's that. Rockbusters. Yes. I don't want you to have monkey news right now, because oh, we've just okay. had a little story there. Sure. <laughs> you don't want it, yeah. You don't want to go too far. Ooh. Yeah, go on. So we'll get Rockbusters out of the way. Have we got a winner? Uh, yeah, well, come on then. Mm, See, it worries really. me that there's, we've had uh, very few entries. I think that even your 
mental fans aren't getting these, which is really worrying. They must be terrible clues this week. All right, well, uh... Has anyone got on right, Steve? I think there's just one guy, yeah, who I suspect has won in the past. Well, uh, you so what? Right, the first one, uh, if you go out of France, buy boat, uh, you might as well buy your fa fags when you're on that, cos you'll get them a lot cheaper. Brilliant. Right? Yeah. Um, BF. Yeah. Buy it ferry, right? That's like- What? <laughs> buy on ferry. What? Buy on- buy What's on buy on ferry? ferry? Who's- what, what's that? Is that a band? What is it? I don't no, know what Bri it is. Brian Ferry. Brian Ferry? What's that got to do with buying on a ferry, though? Just because it's quite close to it. Buy on- <laughs> Buy on ferry. Buy what?! Buy on- Buy on ferry. Sorry, uh, t t t what- That's the What's first your first one. language? Uh, the second one. That's rubbish. That doesn't count. No, Brian- not. Buy on ferry. <laughs> Brian Ferry, buy on ferry. Um, <laughs> there's this little foreign cafe. Um, yeah. it's growing its own steak. Um, that's- that's Delamitri. Uh, the third one- What? What? <laughs> Sorry, what? What? What is that? What is that? Delamitri. Deli is a yeah. little foreign cafe. Yeah? A meat tree and that. <laughs> a meat tree? <laughs> a meat tree? <laughs> what were the initials for that? Just- just D for that. Just D for that? Yeah. So not D-A? So that... you didn't even give them a chance to get the group? Well, they, they got it. Well, no, 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 they, they, they didn't. Right, it's the end. Right, go on, right, go on. Deli meat tree. Deli meat tree. <laughs> One word. D. 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 Or any letter. They're M. Their own M. Meat. M's in it. Go on. Okay, so Bayern, Bayern, I love Bayern Ferry. And <laughs> Oxy, Oxy, Oxy Music. Oxy Music was brilliant. <laughs> can I just- I love Oxy Music. Go on. Can I just point out, Rick, that, um, we've David, had- David Bowie? Delhi Meat Tree. Yeah. I don't see why necessarily uh, Aiden, who uh, emailed in, why he doesn't get to win because he emailed in dire stakes. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to me just as valid as far as I can tell. But <laughs> yeah. Delhi Meat Tree it is. Um, and the last one, uh, if there was a Jamaican fella on the Titanic, I'm looking forward to this it, with, with a little bit of fear. Jamaican fella, if he was on the Titanic, he probably would have screamed this. Yeah. Uh, that's Christ de Berg. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to do. Stunning. So who's who's the winner? I'm not going to give it to anyone. I just what's don't. The, I say so what? What's the Jamaican bit got to do with it? It's the D. Just Christ de Berg. <laughs> say it again. No, I think they, they've worked it out now. What's? What do I say again? Christ de Berg. And who's that? What? Who's that? Who's what? Who's Christ de Berg? Chris de Berg. Who's the winner, Steve? I'm, do you know what? I'm going to give it to so Aiden because he just he just treated you with nothing but contempt. Steve Martin uh, uh, emailed in again. He got the first two, and then the last one he just emailed. I neither know nor care about this answer. I'm tempted to give him. Do you know what you've done there, don't you? Go on. You've put the nail in the coffin of uh, Rockbusters. I warned you, I warned you for three weeks, and you sort of bucked your ideas up for a little while, but Christ de Those Berg, are the worst you've ever done. Uh, the worst of um, Delimitri, so, uh, and didn't, just put D, and then buy and, buy and ferry. Buy and, buy and ferry. Buy, uh, uh, buy and ferry. So, is that it then, aren't we doing it anymore? Play record. Aren't we doing it anymore? I'm ashamed. You're an idiot. Are we doing it anymore? I'm just gonna keep saying you're an idiot. Play a record, Carl. Have anyway? you learnt nothing from Dr. Fox? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not oh, a Sony yeah. out the window. Huh? Aren't we doing it anymore? What, you need to start working on it now, because they're so good, you need to start working now, for next Saturday. Aren't we doing it anymore? Just, I, I don't know. Aren't we doing it? Cardigans. You're the storm on XFM 104.9. Well? Nearly the end of the show, but we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't let them down, would we? You know what it is now, don't you? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> right now, whilst I was in Cornwall, I wasn't online. Right? I didn't no. have the internet, so it was like, oh, what am I going to do? And I didn't come back till yesterday. And I thought there's loads going on that I don't know about in the monkey world and stuff. I was hoping to get some from the zoo that I was meant to be going to. Of course, that didn't happen. 
So, I said to my dad, do you know anything about monkeys? Have you got any stories with monkeys? Brilliant. This is a- <laughs> no, this is what Trevor McDonald does. Turned out- co Quarter to ten, he goes, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's got nothing. <laughs> Dad, anything happened? You got anything politics? Anything politics, Dad? <laughs> this isn't monkey news, I'm just giving you this free. Uh -huh. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, turned out one of his mates used to have a chimp. <laughs> right. Um, what do you mean, one of his mates used to have a chimp? Well, two, two of his mates. Mind oh, you, sorry, yeah, mate, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was thinking it sounds a bit far-fetched living in Manchester-like, <laughs> but if there was two of them. He had a chimp, um, had to thump it in the head. <laughs> <laughs> For doing what? Answering back? <laughs> oh God! Tried it on with his wife. <laughs> I had to stop it in the end for trying it on with his wife. I love it. I love it. It's a proper fist fight in a pub in Manchester. Oh. I'd call him up, but he's one of them who like swears all the time. Right. Oh. I mean, it'd be good. It'd be good to get him on. And just, Let's interview him. Can we not interview him pre-record? We can bleep out the swear. And I'd love to hear his story. Do a lot of work. Like. Yeah. Well. Well. You, 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 well. We're not scared of work. Obviously. No. I mean, I'll get myself if you can't be bothered. Yeah. Oh, you know, I, so. I have a word. I have a word. I'll sort it out. Yeah. Try yeah, and sort that yeah, out. Yeah. Sort um, that out. Yeah. Well, don't yeah. tell us the rest of the story then. Let's let him say it in his own. No, words. but there's another one as well. Uh, some. Fella. When you say you can get him on, but he swears a lot, you mean the monkey? <laughs> okay. I'm assuming he's more coherent than your dad's mate. <laughs> but there's him, and there's some other fellow he knows who had a funny name, I'll have to find out, because you'll love his name. But he was a drag artist. Yeah. And, uh, I think he said he went, my dad went round one day, I don't know why, right? Went around there, knocked on the door, chimp answered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carl, I don't know what you're doing, mate. I don't know where this place you live, next door there's an horse in the front room. There's chimps mad, running mate. round. Mad. Anyway, uh <laughs> Chimp answer! Is that it? Is that the end of the story? There's a chimp answer in the door and that's the end. You sure it wasn't the drag artist before he shaved? No. I'm sure no, it wasn't your grand. Because I, I like the really airy ones that decide they can be female impersonators. <laughs> yeah, your grand. Anyway. Go on um, then. Is, this is the monkey news. So you got that for free. What's this gonna be like, well, Steve? Well let's have more jingles. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news extra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, uh, another phrase, we've been talking about phrases today. Yeah, we have, Don't yeah. teach your granny when she's shaving. Yeah. Uh, don't teach your granny to suck eggs. Yeah. Uh, don't look horse in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> don't let the chin pants the jaw if you're chucking your cock in. <laughs> um, familiar with the phrase monkey business? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never heard that one before, Carl, that's brilliant. Right, well, it came about, this has been emailed in and I haven't really had a chance to look at it, so I'm just weighing it up now. Um, <laughs> oh God. Yeah, this yeah, is the biggest yeah, yeah, shambles yeah, yeah. on air, isn't it, really? Mm -hmm. I'm ashamed of it. it. I mean, what was Dr. Fox? Mm -hmm. Dr. Fox must have been really polite. He must have been thinking, I don't know how to put this. Mm. He, he, uh, he must have wanted to scream and go, you shouldn't be in the radio authority. My parents listen online, I can't look them in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think I've weighed it up. <laughs> Um, <laughs> long time ago, right? Yeah. In the, uh, Olden days, yeah. In Go the on. Amazon jungle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Little family of monkeys in there. Mm hmm Right? Having a good life. Cool. Right? Didn't have any predators in there. Right? So, they were loving it. Yeah. They had a load of food around them, they had loads of banana trees. Yeah. Right? Mm, um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, they did. Sorry, I just, yeah. Everything's going great, so, they're happy in that. They go out of bed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wake up in the morning, load of bananas gone. Ooh, hang on, interesting. Hold on, wait a minute. So, Amazon <laughs> either your dad's been around or... Is it, this isn't the great Amazon banana robbery, is it? So anyway, turns out, it was another load of monkeys from another part of the island, from the rough bit. <laughs> <laughs> from the rough bit! From the rough bit! I love it! They, they went into a middle class area. Oh, oh the ones is... with the earrings and the leather jackets. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant! From a rough part of the island! <laughs> so, the monkeys thought, well, there's no point getting into a fight with them because they're harder than we are. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, and they carry chains. So... <laughs> I love all this conjecture! They've got flip knives and this tattoos. Co yeah, go on. So, basically, they said, let's do some business with the bananas. Let's do some business with the bananas? <laughs> Why are you talking 
the way. <laughs> oh, Christ! Right, calm down. We haven't oh, got much time left. Oh, God! What do you mean they said? Forget, forget it. it. No! Forget no, it. Oh, forget oh, it. Oh, oh, Carl, you're not Switch the record off. Switch the record off. Switch the record off, Carl. What are you talking about? What did they do? Oh. Let's do business with the bananas. Yeah. So, they said, well, rather than them coming robbing them, we'll, we'll flog them. <laughs> so, that put a stop to it then. The people, the monkeys came. They didn't have money. They said, give us some, you know, give us some bananas. Um, and it says, uh... So what, they exchanged bananas for bananas? For, for, for berries and nuts. <laughs> so that's where the phrase monkey business... No! No, it's ...comes no. from. A little business no. to set up. Right, there, oh God. That's the end of that as well. So that's the end. That is a shame. That's the end of Rockbusters and Monkey News. Well done. You've done it in one show.